G'day there guys, Karen here. Back at it again with another episode of r slash I want to speak to your manager. And in today's episode of r slash entitled parents, we're going to do a deep dive into the psychology of the Karen. So I want you to sit back, relax, chuck a prawn on the barbie, and enjoy today's bloody good content. Posted by user Gorgoths, titled, Entitled mother and son would like to trade expensive lightsaber replica for a much cheaper one. This happened about a year or so ago in California's Disneyland, the Star Wars Galaxy Edge to be specific. It was basically my geeky dream to go there and get a Savvis Workshop lightsaber for my 14th birthday. I was eating at one of the Quick Bite restaurants there, it had only burritos and it was an open area with a moving statue in the middle. Entitled mother looked to be in her 40s, entitled kid, me, mum, dad. Entitled kid says, Yo, cool lightsaber, check this one out. He shows me his lightsaber that he must have bought somewhere else. It was the plastic kind, not the one from Savvy's. But I'll admit it was still authentic and double-bladed, so I really loved it. We talked for a while. Seemed he was a hardcore Star Wars fan as well. Entitled Mum comes over and says, Hey, Entitled Kid, come on, the order is ready. Would you mind us sitting at the unoccupied half of the table? Dad says, sure, go ahead. I won't bore you, but a conversation ensues between our groups. They seem like really nice people, and eventually ask where we got the saber. We tell them, and eventually they finish their food and presumably head over to Savvy's. In a matter of time, they return. Wow, no kidding, huh? Those things are expensive. Mum and Dad are like, yeah, for sure, but it's his birthday, so we made an exception. Well, I saw you liked my saber, so I was wondering if we could trade. Honestly, I really considered it at first. It was cool and all, but I noticed the price difference and the value of the saber to me. And I say, no thanks, but I think they have some good replicas at the shop adjacent to Savvy's if you want some. We get up and leave, and the entitled kid and entitled mum start insisting and practically shoving the thing in my face, that's what she said. Without wasting too much time, eventually the trail is to the other end of the park, and the start of the line for the Millennium Falcon ride. So a cast member gets involved, and the entitled mother starts bringing up excuses and asking to see the rules of the park. She insists on trading, but the cast member draws her away, and I enjoy the rest of the day, the end. Posted by user Diameter of Pies, titled Mum Can't Wait in Line for Her Food. The details are a bit shaky, as this happened when I was 11 years old. So me and my parents were at a hotel, which had an open buffet for breakfast. There were an area where you could tell a chef what type of eggs you want and what toppings. There were only four people in line. An elderly woman at the front, the mum and her child in the middle, and me at the end. The chef was making the elderly woman's eggs when the mum says, My son wants egg type. And the chef said, Wait ma'am, I'm busy. The mum scoffs. When the chef finishes the egg, the mum goes, Can you listen to me now? My son is really hungry. Then faces her child and says, He acted as if you didn't exist, right? And the son says, y Yeah, right. Mum, in a sarcastic tone, says, You don't exist, right? Yeah. The chef asked her how she would like her egg. He will have the scrambled eggs. The chef then cracks two eggs in. Oh, that's too much for my son. Throw the egg away. You asked for two eggs. Yeah, but that's too much for my son. That would be a waste of eggs. Just throw it. The chef throws the eggs in the bin and makes her a new one. She then took the egg and went looking annoyed. I then told the chef what I want and smiled at him while he was making it and said thanks at the end. Very nice, OP. You're an angel. Posted by user Mandicapped, titled... My entitled mum keeps asking why I won't dye her hair. So back in the day, like 10 to 12 years ago, I used to dye my mum's hair for her after she went all grey, but I got tired of doing it because she was very whiny and demanding about it. I had or have kids and work full time, so I didn't always have the time or energy, and she would whine that she wanted me to do hers, but finally I refused to do it anymore. Occasionally, I would dye my own hair, and she'll ask why I will dye my own hair, but not hers. Mind you, she never did mine, and this annoys me A, because of the entitlement, and B, because I learned a long time ago from her parenting, if I wanted something that I had to do it myself. 
so why am I obligated to do hers? Well, after a while, I got tired of maintaining my own hair colour, so I've just been sticking with my normal hair colour. Well, this year, since my 12 year old's birthday, like so many this year, was in quarantine, I decided to get her a bunch of Manic Panic and dye her hair different colours. Well, her last colour is starting to fade, so I was telling her to extra shampoo so we can do the next colour, cotton candy pink or hot hot pink. And my mum asked again when I was going to dye hers. I say, I'm not. But why? So I told her again, it's because she harasses me about doing it all the time. When I do my daughter's hair, she might ask if I would do it soon, but she's usually pretty chill and will wait patiently until I feel like doing it. This is just one of many things she expects me to do for her instead of doing it for herself. Posted by user Tpab Ray Rays, titled, Entitled Grandma Let's Toddler Walk Across Our Property and Jump Into Our Pool. I posted this story a couple weeks ago to another similar sub, but I decided to post it here because it works better here. Obligatory on mobile. This was like two years ago, middle of the summer in Florida. All ages were at the time of the story. My, 17 male, brother, 13 male, had a bunch of good neighborhood friends over, ranging from 9 to 14 in age, mostly rowdy guys. They were swimming in our pool behind our house. The pool is maybe six foot from the house on two sides of it and is screened in. Since these aren't my friends, I was just vibing on the couch inside, but I could see the whole thing go down from where I was sitting. I also should note I live in a small middle class subdivision and pretty much everyone has a pool. So a grandma in her 60s, we'll call her EG, from down the street had her grandson, three-ish, aka entitled kid, out on a walk. The kid heard my brother's friends and decided to check it out. Entitled grandma decides to let him walk all the way back there across our property. My mum, 50 female, was back there getting everyone's towels and stuff. Entitled grandma opens our screen door for entitled kid and he goes running in and jumps. My mum saw it and caught him before he could touch the water. Mind you, he's not in appropriate swimwear. She then tells Entitled Grandma that he can't go in the pool and please get off our property. Entitled Grandma asks why he can't swim with the other kids and my mum explains it's because the kids are 19 14 and her kid is 3, so it can be a bit dangerous. Also, it's her property and she said so. Entitled Grandma was not having it and told the kid to jump in. My mum blocked him and they finally left grudgingly. Posted by user Dank Dino, titled, Mum makes her kid babysit for 15 hours a day. I have a friend who babysits this apparently super annoying child who likes to make everything super difficult to handle. E.g., one time I was talking to her and she sent me a video and then this kid just started trying to drink conditioner. I think it was conditioner. So basically, her mum makes her take care of this child every day from like 8.30 a.m. to 11 p.m. This work is unpaid by the way. This kid isn't even related to the family and by what I've heard is that the mum works and the stepdad is busy most days so they send the kid over to my friend's house. They don't pay her mum or my friend which I find kind of insane for them and her mum to expect my friend to take care of some random kid for 465 hours a month. My friend is 15 by the way. Edits and another kid is being sent over. What the hell? Yeah, I definitely think something needs to be done about that situation. That's not healthy, and I would recommend sorting that out ASAP, maybe even call CPS. This seems like a CPS issue. Posted by user The Salty Lime, titled, My girlfriend's entitled mother is ticked at her for deleting a tracking app she let the entitled mother use. I am posting this for her since her account doesn't meet the karma requirement. I am a truck driver and my mother has been envious of me ever since I started training. She wanted to be a truck driver her whole life and my occupation has enabled her to live vicariously through me. I was never necessarily fond of this, but she's my mother, so I let it go. When I finished training and started driving, I downloaded a family tracking app on my phone so my boyfriend, who would join me on the road a little later on, could see where I was and help direct me to a nearby truck stops. 
The GPS in my truck doesn't let me change where I'm going while driving. I offered to share my location via the app with my mother, since she is so passionate about truck driving, and it would give her a chance to experience it just a little bit. She took this as an opportunity to attempt to run my life for me. She would often get paranoid from watching videos of trucking accidents and constantly blow up my phone, which I'm not allowed to check while driving, warning me of various places and things to look out for. Other people might be grateful of this constant advice giving, but to me it was just annoying. She also went completely ballistic whenever the app was disabled due to low slash dead battery and would blow up at me and my boyfriend's phone in a panic, demanding to know where I am and if I'm safe. While I do appreciate the fact that she cares about me, having to deal with this for a month straight started to take its toll on me and my job. I got the chance to visit my sister who knows of my mother's bipolar actions and warned me to delete the app before she takes things too far. I took her advice and deleted the app after letting my boyfriend know what was going on. I gave my mum a call and let her know that I no longer wanted to use the app and deleted it. This sent her into a rage and she started berating me and my sister, who she knew I visited with earlier. I ignored her tantrum and gave her the cold shoulder for a month to let her cool down. Her birthday came around the corner and I sent her a well-meaning message wishing her a happy birthday. She responds to said message complaining about how me and my sister were planning a special event for my father. They're divorced and he's way better to me and my sister, but not her. Keep in mind, my father and sister live in Texas and my mom is all the way in California, so it's difficult to arrange anything for her given how far away she is. Edit, Entitled Mother just called me. I thought for a second that it was about this post, but she was just asking how things are. I told her girlfriend was asleep, but she was sitting right next to me listening to everything. Entitled Mother talked about how much her feelings were hurt when the app was deleted and asked me to try and persuade her into reinstalling it. I was nice about it, was super vague like, I'll be sure to ask her at some point. I noticed during the call that Entitled Mother would keep dropping subtle hints about how she wants girlfriend to change, and if you weren't riding with her, I would quit my job and go on the road with her just to keep her safe. Ooh. Posted by user, it's SollyboyXD. Titled, My daughter deserves her own private video call with her best friend. Mobile formatting, yada yada. Warning, not as extreme as other posts, but still infuriating. Caster, me or OP, magical emu. My mum, my sister, my sister's friend, and the entitled mother, the eggnog man, or woman, I guess. So Elle celebrated her 10th birthday in lockdown, and she had a video call with a group of close friends. For some backstory, she had changed school since the one she used to go to, and so did I, but many years before her, was a crap school with bullies and lazy teachers around every corner. So she didn't have as much contact with her close friends as possible, and therefore was more upset when she couldn't see them on her birthday. They were all in a private group chat, so she put the link to the Zoom link on that group. She also included a message that she had a call with her family after it. So if you didn't join that call, then you couldn't have your own private call, though she hoped they'd all be able to make it. Elle also mentioned that she couldn't do it in the week either, as our school has been swamping us with work, so we barely have any free time. One of my sister's friends, Kay, who was probably the least close to her friend out of that group, has a tendency not to check messages, so Elle made sure she got the message, by privately messaging her, emailing her, and any other medium that she had access to. Despite these efforts, she didn't get the message and missed out on the call. A couple of days later, we get a call from Entitled Mother, which I pick up as my mum is out, that goes as such. Hello? Hi OP, it's Entitled Mother, can I speak to M? Oh, sorry, M's out. Would you like me to leave a message? Could you tell her that I was wondering when Kay's private call with L is, as she's been waiting for a while now and has been very patient? Oh, I'm sorry, but my sister cannot have a call with Kay as she and I are both swamped with work at the moment, and we don't get that much free time. I doubt that Elle has said that. You were just speaking for her. I'll get her on now if you want. She's on a short break. Fine. I brought the phone over to Elle, who was browsing TikTok, on her phone. 
and she says, Hi, Entitled Mother, I really would like to speak to Kay, but I have very few breaks, and I would like to spend them reading my book or browsing on my phone. Bye! So I say to the Entitled Mother, Is that enough for you? Ah, oh, she doesn't know what she's saying. L and K are BFFs. I say, whilst they're close, L has told me multiple times that blank is her best friend. How dare you? My little girl is crying because of what you just said. She handed the phone over to S.E.K. And S.E.K. muttered, what, what am I doing? And entitled mother in a shouty whisper says, cry. Oh, um, insert bad fake crying here. At this point, I could barely contain myself and had to hold my breath to stop myself from laughing. I couldn't. And Entitled Mother says, What's so funny, you brat? So I'm just like, Bye, Entitled Mother. I swear, she had started saying, That's right, walk away, beer, before I hung up. My mum later got a message saying that I had yelled obscenities at Entitled Mother and Kid. I told Em about it, and we just laughed it off and didn't stoop to Entitled Mother's level. I honestly feel sorry for Kay being stuck with a parent like that and being forced to play along. Elle did end up speaking to Kay, but only a couple of weeks later, once the half-term holidays had begun. Posted by user DRB097, titled, My mother kicked me and my fiancé out of their house because I brought her McDonald's. Yesterday, I, 22 male, and my fiancé, 24 female, were in North Carolina to visit my parents and spend time with them, and celebrate my fiancé's birthday. Everything was okay Saturday and Sunday, but crap hit the fan on Monday. My fiancé had to work a 5-2 to two shift on what would be today, and we were trying to see if we should leave at 4 or wait until after dinner. I said to wait until after dinner, but my parents never asked us what we would like or if she would like what they were making. They made sausage and shrimp skewers. My fiancé doesn't care much for seafood, and my parents already know that because I told them. My fiancé asks me if I could get some food for her and get gas for the car. She said she didn't like what they made and she didn't want to take food from me, given that my parents don't make enough for everyone. So I went and got gas and the food and brought it back. My dad saw the bag and straight up told us to get the frick out of his house and that we are liars. They said that we were texting under the table when in reality, we were texting different friends at the time. My mum went to see what happened, instantly went to speak to my dad, then confronted us, saying that we're liars and sneaky and don't appreciate what they do for us and told me the reason why I'm so skinny is because my fiancé eats all the food. They've done next to nothing for us. Me and my fiancé have been together for nearly two years, and they've never taken interest to get to know her or figure out what types of food she likes, so that way we can all eat the same thing together. We left, and about an hour into the drive, my mother posts a long rant saying that we should see things from their side, that we're both liars, and admit facts, and that we should push our wedding back in September because it's an inconvenience to them. I contemplated revoking their invite, but my fiancé said we should go ahead with what the plan is and show them how happy we are at our wedding as the ultimate screw you to them. Though, I am still considering paying off my debts to them and then cutting them out of our lives. Edits, clarified that my parents accused me of lying a bit and some grammar and spelling. Posted by user Shadowfang84, titled... I shouldn't get my badge since I was too young. Backstory. Really was an extrovert as a kid, so I took Boy Scouts. This was before Girl Scouts can join Boy Scouts. I was really good at it, so I continued to work hard. And when I was 13, I took a first aid merit badge. So I did my thing and got the pre-badge requirements done, so I was pumped to do it. Let's meet our cast for today. OP is me, EP, the entitled counsellor who was biased against me, SM, the scout master, and K is entitled parent's kid. Story. So I got all my prereqs done, and I was super hyped to do the badge along with others. So I showed my understanding of the badge, and even the older scouts there were impressed. So when entitled parent needed help, I gave it to her, not knowing the results. So I was helping a kid out, and an entitled parent pulled me aside to only tell me this. Look mate, you need to grow up a bit before you can have the badge. 
Look at my son. He 100% knows what he's doing and deserves the first class. I was a tenderfoot at the time. So I tried to calmly explain to her that I obviously knew what I was talking about for the badge and I proved that I have all the prereqs. So this went back and forth like a tug of war, but tug of war quickly escalated into war. An entitled parent said, even if you have the requirements, you are just a stupid kid and don't know anything, or something along the lines of that. And I say, well clearly you're dumber than me if you need me to explain the material, you dumb a-hole. You need to learn to respect your elders. Well, most elders are smart. Clearly, you are a rock. She actually grabbed me and pushed me out of the door to the first aid training, and I say, get your grimy, wrinkly, filthy hands off of me, you expletive. After that, I got the head leader of the camp. She reluctantly gave me my blue card. Blue cards show that you got the actual badge fair and square. Final day rolls around, and I get my envelope with all my blue cards. I had them all with flying colors, except for one. Hi, welcome back to Insert Game Show here, and let's see our questions. For $500, what badge was missing from the envelope? Was it A, fishing, B, first aid, or C, leatherworking? If you guessed B, ding 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 ding, you would be correct. Well, it wasn't missing, it was shredded up and a piece of white paper that said, grow up. I was furious. I grabbed my scoutmaster, dragged him along to the first aid site and let her get a piece of my mind. She denied it left and right and even had the audacity to say, why would it be little old me? Ma'am, we know it was you. We have cameras for YPT, but they catch everything. Slowly, the color drained from her face. I never knew about these cameras, but better late than never. I had to prove to the council that I did understand the material in the end, but I aced that. Thankfully, Entitled Parent got fired on the spot, and I got the badge after all. Edit. Forgot to mention it, but her son came in also to report her to the police afterwards, so he was cool. Thanks, son. Nice. Posted by user Sweet Baguette, titled, Entitled Mother Tried to Yell at Me Because She Crashed Her Nice Car Into My Old Car. This is before quarantine. So I'm 15 and I have a driver's permit, and my friend, 18, has her driver's license, so she was in the passenger's seat. So basically, I was just driving to a Jack in the Box, or Tim Hortons, whichever one was closer, and we stopped at a red light, and as it changed to green, I went and this lady rams into my side door in the back, and thankfully none of us were harmed. Anyway, we quickly got out of there as we grabbed our wallets, phones, the important stuff afterwards, you know. Anyway, I started to panic as I'm crying at this point, and this is where Entitled Mother pops in. What the frick did you just do to my perfect car? I couldn't speak as my friend stepped in. You ran a red light, you idiot. Were you driving? No, but I saw everything. It was you driving, looking at me. I managed to nod as she said, you are too young to drive. She laughed slightly as she thought she was going to throw one minor and a new adult in jail and get money from it. Basically, Entitled Mother crossed her arms and waited for the police as we traded insurance cards. The police come and assess the situation as they question Entitled Mother first. Those two were drunk driving and almost killed me and my baby boy. She had what seems to be an eight-year-old child, which seemed perfectly fine, as the police talked to him, as people checked all of us for any damage. She says, my baby boy is scared and this just ruined life for him. The police just nodded and went to us. I was still crying. This makes me seem like I'm a baby, but I have autism, which makes me scared of confrontation and yelling, and most definitely anything bad. And so basically, the police questioned us as we explained the situation and showed them our driver's licenses and IDs. The police were extremely nice to me as I had a card explaining my autism, and they just generally helped me calm down. Anyway, the police saw cameras for a store outside, which caught everything, as they checked the traffic cameras and the store cameras. Entitled Mother smirked like a demon, as she thought she would get away with this, 
and the police came back saying they watched the footage and the color drained out of her face as she kept changing her story to get out of the situation as she said, my boy needs to go to football practice. If he's late, he'll be kicked off the team and it's gonna be your fault while yelling at the officer. And then 10 seconds later, she said, my mom is in the hospital and I need to see her before she dies. And then, my baby boy needs to go to the doctors for shots, etc. So basically, in the end, she was in a police cruiser and I was taken to Tim Hortons in an Uber with my friend and back to my home. I did press charges as there were so many witnesses, as in court she broke down saying, I need to feed my kids while she had like Gucci and Louis Vuitton. I was able to fix my car and I never ran into her again. Also, I got most of the stories because I live in an entitled neighborhood for it is the buzz box for all entitled people. People have messaged me on my first and second post on this subreddit saying that I made the stories up. You can think that, but just to let you know, I do live in an expensive neighborhood where people think that they're better than others. Another Reddit, I've got my learner's permit, not my driver's license. Driver's permit is where you have to have someone with their license in the car with you as you drive. My mom turned her guest room into a nursery after I told her she will never meet my child. So I'm currently pregnant with my first child and both my mom and stepdad have been terrible to me and my partner the entire time. Told us we would be unfit parents because we aren't married yet legitimately screamed at my partner for knocking up their little girl, even though we planned the pregnancy. I finally decided to con contact with them a few months after I found out I was pregnant. Having a child can already be a stressful time, and having them around to make it worse was not something I was okay with. If they can't be nice to my partner, then they don't get to see our baby. Plus, they're the kind of people who don't wear masks in public and actively choose to be in large gatherings with no social distancing. So them seeing a newborn is out of the question. One day, I sent my mum a very detailed email of why she is not allowed to be a part of my life anymore and will not be seeing her grandchild. To make things even better, I also noted that we will be moving across the country shortly after she is born to be closer to other family members. So not only is she cut off, but we are literally moving far away and never coming back. She responds by showing up at our house at 11 p.m., screaming outside our door about how it's her baby and she deserves to be there for it. I tell her to freak off and eventually she leaves. Months go by and she will text me randomly asking about technical problems with her Wi-Fi router or something and needs help. Little things like that don't mean much to me and I send her the info she needed. My cousin also had a virtual baby shower and sent my invitation to my mum's house accidentally, so my mum came by to give it to me. Things slowly came to a point that we were fairly amicable with each other, but I still stood my ground about our boundaries and nothing else has changed, and she knew this. Then she sends me a video today that blew my mind. She redecorated her entire guest room to be a nursery, crib, changing room, $400 worth of newborn clothes, toy chest, stroller, a car seat for her car, and the list goes on. In the video, she's in tears saying, oh my god, I can't believe my baby is going to be here soon. This is where she will sleep, where I will change her little diapers. These will be her toys. Is she psychotic? Her baby? Sleeping and living at her house? What? So I call her up immediately, and I reiterate that we are still moving across the country soon, and that she will have no contact with the baby before that. Her response? Oh, okay, we will see about that. Genuinely confused. What part of, you will have no contact with this baby, does she not understand? Or thinks that will change in the next few weeks when she is born? Is she planning on stealing her from us? I am at a loss for words. Edit. Wow, so many great tips from you guys. Thank you for the advice. I showed my partner the comments I've been getting and I think we're starting to take this more seriously and I will be contacting a lawyer on Monday. I wanted to mention a couple of things to clarify as well. I have been seeing a psychotherapist the past few months strictly due to the relationship I've had with my mother throughout my life and all of that is documented. My midwife in hospital is also very aware of the situation and the emotional stress that I've been going through. 
so we will definitely be utilizing this in the case that she tries to sue us or call CPS. Also, due to the virus, only my partner is allowed to be with me during the birth anyway. We will be keeping things hush until after we move. We would have moved months ago if it was financially possible for us. We also spent a lot of money on my birth center that is not refundable. She is due in August and our lease ends in September. We already have everything set up to move and our other family is helping us out. It's just a waiting game at this point. My partner is my power of attorney if something happens to me during the birth. We are currently in a state that is against grandparents' rights. The only way she would be able to sue for visitation is if both myself and my partner were deceased. Even after we move, she still cannot file for GPS if she is living in this state. Posted by user Garden Tramp, titled, Entitled Mum Asks Me to Give Her One of My Dogs. Okay, so up until this happened to me, I thought most of the Entitled Parent stories were bullcrap, but this happened to me, and I've started believing a lot more of the stories here. This happened to me a good few months ago. My landlord was selling the house that me and my family lived in, and we couldn't find a house that we could afford to rent before we had to move out. So we ended up moving in with my auntie. My aunt lives pretty close to the center of a small town, 8,000 people, and there's a gate to the back garden beside her house. You can see, somewhat, into the garden through it. My aunt has two dogs, tiny chihuahuas, and I have one beagle slash dalmatian mix. She's pretty chubby. So we had three dogs living in the house. When the dogs are bored, they love standing at that little gate and barking at people who walk past. One day, I was home alone, and my sister was at school, and my parents and aunt were working. So I was in the kitchen, cooking dinner for my family while the dogs ran circles around the garden and barked at everything that moved. This also sucked because there was a vet's office directly beside us, and the vet's parking was behind the office, meaning that anyone who brings any animals into the vet could be seen from our garden which means it could be seen by the dogs too, and every single time they saw anyone bring an animal, they went crazy. This meant that it was completely normal for the dogs to be barking like mad. I heard a knock on the door and assumed it was my dad coming home from work early or coming to pick up something that he had left at home. I usually lock the door when I'm home alone and he often forgets his keys. The door wasn't locked this time, but sometimes he rings the doorbell without even checking if the door is open. I unlocked the door, and there stood a lady, I'll call her entitled parent, with her kid in tow. The dogs were standing at the gate, absolutely losing their minds that someone dared to stand in front of their house. Then, the following convo happens. Paraphrased, this conversation happened a good few months ago, maybe even around a year ago, so I don't remember it very well. Entitled parent says, hi, sorry for bothering you. I had shouted just come in at them in Polish earlier, since I thought it was my dad. She probably thought I was getting angry about someone ringing the doorbell. Her apologizing for bothering me made me think she was going to be nice. And I say, oh, hello. I saw you have puppies in your garden. They're very nice. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, they are. My daughter really liked them. Oh, I'm glad. How many dogs do you have? Um, there's three. Could you give us one? What? I'm sorry, no. It looks like you have a lot more than three dogs in there. You could give us one. She's smiling, but her eyes are starting to look a lot, lot less friendly. Um, no, there's just the three. Are you sure? If you're going to be selling the puppies anyways, you can give one to us. Sorry, miss, but they're all grown dogs. I have no puppies to give you. Goodbye. And I start closing the door. Goodbye. They are very nice dogs, she says as she starts walking away. The ending of the conversation was awkward, though it wasn't this abrupt. I don't remember exactly how the ending of the conversation went, though. She didn't drag it out nearly as long as she could have, but the last, they're very nice dogs, freaked me out so much that I kept the dogs inside for the next few days and only let them into the garden while I was standing there, watching them. It was also crazy to have some lady knock on my door and try to convince me to give her one of my dogs. This one isn't too crazy, but I still thought I'd share. Thanks for reading. Hope you have a good day. Posted by user Bookslayer999, titled, Entitled Mum Demands Free Food and Then Pepper Sprays Me. 
Yeah, what the title says is true. This actually happened last week. Obligatory mobile speech, yada yada. Some slight backstory. I, 16 male, work at a restaurant known for fancy foods and the like. So we get a lot of business, especially during the summer. We had just reopened for business after the corona lockdown and more and more people had started to come in to eat. About the layout of the restaurant, the dishwashing room has two entrances across from each other with one that leads into the kitchen and one that leads to the dining room. Also, when someone orders a dish, we put the food right into the dish, like most restaurants. Now, with that out of the way, let's get into the story. Keep in mind, me, hi, entitled mother, you know, K is entitled kid, entitled mother's child, doesn't say anything but just stands there. SC, sous chef. It was a busy day and I was running around the dishwashing room to get stuff done when entitled mother and kid come through the doorway. This isn't that unusual, as some people may have missed the bathrooms and came down this hallway instead. Not trying to be rude, I say, hello, are you looking for someone? Entitled mother in a sweet tone says, yes, actually, I'm looking for the dishwasher. This is odd because I just clean the dishes, I don't make them. Well, that would be me. I want a full refund, my plate had food on it, and it was disgusting. My baby couldn't eat his food because of it. Well, I'm not the person to talk about the quality of the food, and the plates always come with your food on it. No, you don't understand. There was food on my plate, and in it was not clean. And yes, you are the person to talk to about this. No, I want to see your manager. Me, knowing where this is going, say, well, the chef isn't here today, but sous chef is right there if you need him. But as you can see, I turn around and grab a bunch of knives and turn around, I have a lot of stuff to do, and you aren't supposed to be here, so you- All of a sudden, Entitled Mother lets out a huge scream as she eyes me with fear. Then, out of her purse, she pulls a bottle of pepper spray and sprays my face. I am carrying things in both my hands, so I cannot block it. It takes a second, but my eyes start to burn and I drop everything and cover my face. All of this is happening while Entitled Mother is screaming her head off, yelling, Help! Help! He's trying to kill me and my boy! Help! Help! By now I am on the ground curled up. I can't see, and it burns bad. And I'm just screaming, ah! The other people who work there, including Sue's chef, rush into the dishwashing room. Everyone is yelling, with Entitled Mother trying to tell people I was going to attack her. Kay screaming about me on the floor, and me trying to stand up without bumping into anything. It was at this point that Entitled Mother realized what she was doing and got the freak out of there. I got some help and got to the bathroom to wash my eyes out, and I got the day off with full pay. Nevertheless, Entitled Mother got banned from our restaurants, and we warned the other restaurants in our area about her. So, I don't think she'll be going out to eat anytime soon. All's well that ends well, and all that. Thanks for reading. Posted by user pavgiot123, titled, Entitled Parents Lie Because They Don't Want to Watch Their Kids Match. This is not my story, but my cousin's, told to me by my dad. It happened just a couple of days ago. Also, things have opened up completely here. It is relevant for later. English is not my first language. Now, a little bit of background. My cousin bought last year a small shop that was next to some fields, where teams go to practice. There are also pools there that are for the teams, but also open to the public. Everything but the shop is public property. He manages it with my dad, who has some experience with this sort of stuff. The shop sells coffee, soft drinks, snacks, and some food that you find in cafes. Generally, a pretty nice place. Now, since things have opened up, the teams are holding matches there. A couple of days ago, they were holding a beach volley match there. Now the shop, as far as I know, was open for kids in case they needed anything later, but also the parents. But no parents came. It was kind of weird, but my cousin and the person working there just shrugged it off as whatever. Maybe they were at the bleachers, which are located above the shop, as they are part of the building. Nope. Once the match ended, some of the kids went by the shop. They know my cousin, so they spoke to him. It went something like this. Team, why didn't you let our parents come watch our match? Cousin, what do you mean? We were open and the bleachers above us are public property. They're free to sit there if they want. 
The kids look confused at my cousin. Turns out their parents had lied to them that the shop owner didn't let them sit and watch the match because their parents wanted to roam about and not watch. The kids left shortly after. It was really sad because one of the teams playing is from an island and they came here to have the match, and their parents just abandoned them there to roam the city. Posted by user Chaos Kitten, titled No Mask Equals No Service Equals Temper Tantrum. I've been getting a lot of texts from my mother in law complaining that anytime she tries to go shopping or to a restaurant, they keep getting kicked out and banned. I've been ignoring her because I figured she was exaggerating and being overly dramatic, just going crazy from being trapped inside. On Monday, I met her at an outdoor restaurant and was shocked that she didn't have a mask. I figured she was just not wearing it outside because everyone is 10 plus feet away and it's 90 degrees out. We went inside to order, me putting my mask back on and her not. We were stopped and an employee very nicely and gently asked her to put the mask on and wait outside while I ordered. She scoffed at the sheeple and produced a rather ratty card that granted her some magical exception to wearing a face mask. She loudly declared that her First Amendment rights were being violated and that they have no legal right to make her wear a mask, which is true, but they can deny her service. She was hollering and carrying on about how they aren't doctors, so they can't make medical recommendations. Also true, but the mask rule is set down by the CDC and pretty much every doctor ever. I just walked out after 10 minutes and went home. She texted me to apologize for their ignorance and wants to make plans to try again. I have no plans on seeing her again for a long while or possibly ever. I'm still getting texts from her though about how she can't shop for food and how nothing is fair. I've suggested Instacart and online, but she wants to go to the store. I really want to point out that she's being a selfish idiot, not a good Christian, and generally a huge pain, and is going to end up getting banned from every restaurant and store in this small town. Posted by user The Stash Attacked, titled The Time an Entitled Mother Tried to Drown Me in Sauce, Fairly Literally. Edit This was almost a decade ago, I'm long gone. So, r slash ask reddit has a thread about the tackiest thing you ever saw at a wedding, and I was reminded of this fun incident from the three months I worked catering. Worst of all my food service jobs, by the way. Our cast are me, uh, obviously, entitled mother, entitled dad, entitled brat, boss, my a-hole boss, the bride, and the groom. So, campus catering rarely did weddings. And honestly, the food we made was so bad and so poorly handled, I'd think you'd want to avoid it. But the father of the groom was a big name on campus, so it was held on campus and we had to cater it. I'm managing the entrees, serving up terrible chicken in a thick, congealed sauce and vegetarian pasta that's basically just half-assed pasta primavera with a cheap, nasty oil on it. Seriously. I love me some Primavera, and I wouldn't touch this garbage with a 10-foot pole. We're winding down, the last of the food is out, in a few minutes we will put the main course away and set out the dessert of course. Suddenly, Entitled Brat appears. He's about 10 years old, so he absolutely knows better than to do this. He decides that it's going to be the funniest thing in the entire world to yank the tablecloth away. Seriously. He was giggling the whole time, so I knew something was up. When I caught him with the edge of the tablecloth, I moved fast. I said, kid, don't even think about it. It's going to end very badly. He giggles more and starts pulling. So I walk over, take the tablecloth out of his hand, and tell him to scram. I go back behind the table, smooth my apron, and continue my awful job. And that's when things went badly. Entitled Mum comes up to me and says, why did you chase my baby? He wasn't doing anything wrong. Ma'am, your child was about to pull the tablecloth down and it's my job to stop him. If I don't, I could be fired. Yes, this happens to a colleague. We are paying for this wedding. Don't you know who I am? That's when I realized this was the mother of the bride. Ma'am, I understand, but there are lit. And that's when she jumped across the table, grabbed my head, and tried to force my face into a tray of sauce for the chicken, a very hot tray heated by a lit sterno underneath. I of course started hitting her and screaming. 
the father of the groom came running over. Entitled Dad comes running over. The bride and groom come running. My boss comes running. Entitled Dad suddenly decides to try helping his wife to shove my face into the sauce. I start clawing at him too, while the groom and his dad try to pry these people off me. The bride screams something like, You promised! You promised! I'm not entirely sure here. It was chaos. My boss is standing off to the one side like a potato. All the while, Entitled Brad is sitting off to the side, laughing like this is the funniest thing he's ever seen. In the end, the table went over and caught on fire from the sternos. A fire extinguisher was employed, and the wedding was basically ruined. My boss pulled me aside while I prepared to file a police report and said, You can't talk to the police. Actually, I can. If you talk to the police, I'll fire you. That's illegal. You can't do that. Your choice. I filed the police report and told them what my boss said. He didn't fire me. Entitled mother and entitled dad pled guilty to misdemeanor assaults. The bride handed me a huge slice of cake because she was pretty sure my boss would steal my tips, which he did. Posted by user Poplio Loves Gaming, titled "I'm Your Mother, So You Should Give Me Half of Your Work Money." Hey guys, so I thought about this from a few days ago and decided to post it here. A little backstory. My mother is not the entitled mum in this story, but her mother is. My mother's family didn't have a whole lot of money growing up and、uh, lived in a not so normal home. I don't want to be disrespectful. Her mother, entitled mother, didn't have a job, but nice dad, ND, did, but only twenty bucks a week. They each had seven kids together. Entitled mother was not the most respectful woman in the world, and encouraged her kids not to go to college. Out of the seven kids, my mum was the only one to go to college and graduate. I love you, mum. If you are reading this, now on to the story. While my mum was in college, she knew she needed money, so she started a lawn mowing business. Ten dollars for one mowed lawn. The chaos began whenever her mother found out what business she was doing. One day. My mother opened up the door to find her mother standing there. The following conversation went like this: "Hey, M, how was school today? Oh, you know, it was mediocre. So, I heard you started a lawn mowing business. Mum, having an oh crap, she found out moment. Um, yeah. What about it? Well, since I'm your mother and gave birth to you, don't you think I should have half of it? Are you are you serious right now? Yeah, I'm serious." Give half of it to me now. My mom just generally peed off right now. Says fine. My mother then gave her five dollars before she walked away. This continued on for a couple of years before she got a then boyfriend, now divorced husband, and decided to move out of that hellhole. You know what I mean. Nd understood, while entitled mother realized that meant no more pay for her and tried to stop her. Mom yelled at her and told her to stay the hell away from her. She then moved out to stay with her now divorced husband and had two children together. They then decided that it was not working and decided to get divorced. She then met a new person who was my amazing father and married him after a year and a half of dating. Her and my father then had me and my amazing little brother. She is way nicer than entitled mother. If you want to hear more stories, yes, this isn't the only one. Then I would happily go on about my mother's entitled mother. Hope you all had a great day and stay safe. Posted by user Scout and Mo Boy, titled "Entitled Mother Demands to Take Her Daughter Off the Ward." I don't know how titles work. A little context: For the past year, I've been working on a children slash adolescent psych ward as a BHA. I usually do rounds one and one, etc. It's about mid March, right before COVID. And I've got a full unit of girls and half of boys. It's Tuesday night, so I do visitation like I usually would. I'm chilling outside the door doing rounds, and this teen, PT, and her mum, KA, are done with the visit, and it went something like this. I say, "Are you done with your visit, PT?" PT is visibly upset. Not usual on the unit. Hi. Yes, my daughter has been saying that she feels a lot better, and that we would like to take her home. I'm looking at them puzzled. Seeing as she just came in yesterday, and the minimal is three days. Oh, well, that's not my decision, and I'm not sure she can even leave till tomorrow. Well, she said she isn't feeling sad anymore, and I think she could come home with me tonight. 
Like I said, that isn't my decision. I would call the nurse's desk tomorrow if you would like. I stand up to bring PT upstairs to the units when KA grabs my arm. She's not depressed anymore. Can't we just take her home tonight? I removed her hand from my arm, ready to be the activity I am as someone with depression. All right, well, depression can be invisible. Just because she's acting happy to you doesn't mean she's actually well. I walk PT upstairs as the other staff members ask her to wait for a security guard as she starts arguing with him. Turns out the girl took her off of her visitation list after that. I feel bad for the kid, to be honest. Neighbor parks his car and blocks my exit. Don't mess with a woman scorned. This happened about five years ago when I moved into a wheelchair-friendly unit. I'm a 29-year-old disabled female in a wheelchair. The unit complex I live in has 20 units, upstairs and down, but only half of the tenants have assigned parking. I have a car space, but this neighbor didn't. It took a while for the tenants to get used to this. It was a brand new complex, and the tenants all moved in at the same time. But one of them, let's call him Dick, either didn't get it or didn't care. He would constantly park in my space, and every time I confronted him about it, he claimed not to know, but he'd park there anyway. I informed the landlords about this, and they sent out constant letters until he finally got the message. But did he park on the street? Nope. He started to park his car along the driveway, sometimes blocking my exit. To get out of my door, I go down a ramp and then turn onto the driveway, but he would park his car and block my exit. There was no back exit, so this was my only way to exit my place. I told the landlords about this and the council parking officer in hopes that they could make him stop doing this. I confronted Dick a few times and told him not to do this and warned him that his car might get damaged if I try to get my wheelchair around it. But did he listen? Nope. One glorious day when I needed to leave, I saw his car parked halfway across my exit. There was just enough room for me to get around, but I knew I would scrape the side of his car with the side of my power wheelchair if I tried to get around it. I had two options stay home and miss my appointments, or try and get around his car. I went with option B. Before you have a go at me for damaging his car, it was an old beat up tin can that already had scratches on it. What's one more? When I got home, his car was still parked there. So I called a tow truck company and told them there was a car parked illegally, blocking access to my home. I don't like using my disability to my advantage, but I had had enough. The call went something like this. Ring, ring. Hello? Ah, hello. Um, yeah, I'm sorry to b bother you, but I'm in a wheelchair and I, I can't get into my house because there's a c car parked there. Um, it's my neighbor and he won't stop parking there. I n need to get inside. Oh my god, what? What's the address? We'll be right there. Ten minutes later, the tow truck arrived. He saw the car, and me, stuck out in the driveway with tears, dramatized for effect, in my eyes. Not long before the driver was about to tow the car away, Dick came out screaming, Wait! What are you doing? That's my car! The rest was Dick yelling inaudible sentences, asking why his car was being towed, and threatening to sue the tow truck company. Based on the crap fest of a tin can he calls a car, he didn't have a leg to stand on. He moved away about two years ago, but in the remaining time he lived there, he parked his car on the street. Good boy, Dick. Glad you learned your lesson. Posted by user Zeru77, titled, Lady on the bus wants me to get up from my seat when there are tons of seats available. Ends up having to walk the rest of the way. This is a very old story, back from over a year ago, but I was scrolling through this subreddit and it popped into my mind. So this story takes place in summer, after my last day of school. I had just said bye to my classmates and friends, and was extremely tired after a long but fun last day. I hop into the bus and sit on the window seat and go to sleep. A little while later, in comes Entitled Lady. Let's call her Betty because we're all tired of Karen. Oh, back Betty, bam blam. Betty doesn't look a day over 45, in perfect health. Yet, to my surprise, she asks me to get up from my seat. I say, I'm very sorry, lady, but I'm not giving up my seat. Half the seats are available, and you don't necessarily have to sit here. 
I am your elder, you must get up from this seat. Look, mate, you can literally sit anywhere else. It doesn't matter if you're my elder, you are literally a random stranger on the bus. Please sit elsewhere. At this point, the driver heard Betty yelling, and at this point, this bus was routine for me. So the driver knew me, not personally, but he knew I wouldn't ever cause trouble, and that I'm just a teenager who wants to get home. So he comes over and talks to Betty and says, Excuse me, what's going on? This little brat is being disrespectful. I wasn't disrespectful. I was just sleeping in peace, and this random lady started telling me to give her this specific seat. He's right, lady. You can sit elsewhere. OP was just sleeping peacefully. No, I want this seat. I take this bus every day, and this seat is always empty. Just because this seat is usually available doesn't mean I... Does it look like I care? I'm a customer, and I need this seat. You know what? If you want this seat so badly, get off the bus and wait for the next passage. You can't do that. Oh, yes, I can. You have the choice. Get off the bus and wait for the next one, or walk. She ended up getting off, and according to the driver, whom I saw the next day while going to a friend's house, he saw her walking the rest of the route and showed him the finger. He got a good laugh that day. <laughs> I like that. Posted by user Bus Driver Jim, titled, You're Scottish, so you must speak dot dot dot. Near the small depot where I work is a town that, during the summer, is used as a port from large cruise liners. This can be fun for a few reasons, such as when you pull up to the stop and see enough people standing to fill you to capacity three to four times over. The majority of the passengers are Americans, and most of the time they are pleasant, although you do get the odd arrogant ones. Last year I had a family who were decked out in MAGA hats and t-shirts who required the police, but I'll tell that another time. Today's tale is about the family that came on the bus decked out like extras from the movie Braveheart, one of the most inaccurate movies ever made. Seriously, they came on in kilts, and the dad looked at me and smugly asked to travel to a nearby city in Gaelic. I'm me, dad will be EP, embarrassed family will be EF, although they didn't do anything. I say, sorry, what? And he repeats Gaelic. I'm not understanding you, where are you going? I wish to go to city name. Do you not speak the mother tongue? With a look of disgust on his face. My mum's from Drumchapel, area of Glasgow, mate. She speaks Scottish, which is Scottish English. But you're Scottish. Do you speak Gaelic? Not a word. But your heritage is Gaelic before it was beaten out of you by the scum from England. He actually said that. My wife's English, mate. And just so you know, your gibberish was only spoken in the Highlands and Islands. It wasn't spoken elsewhere in Scotland. That'll be £21, please. I'm not paying that. You were rude, so we're getting on for free. By this time, the entitled parents' family were embarrassed and started asking him to shut up and pay the fare. Either pay the fare or get off. There's a queue forming. If you don't, then I'll phone the police. But then you'll be late. I'm paid by the hour, so the longer I take, the more I get paid. And he hands me $21. Sorry, don't accept funny money. Only pounds sterling, I say with a smile on my face. At this point, the wife grabs entitled parents and drags him away, yelling at him. Next American passenger comes on and immediately apologized for his actions. I've had quite a few stories dealing with tourists that I'll put up if people are interested. Stay safe, everyone, and enjoy your weekend. Posted by user Captain Bunny 1996 titled... My uncle threatens my life for being gay. Trigger warning. Hi everyone. This story is short, but it's a good one. I'm on mobile, so sorry for any format errors. My first language is English, but honestly, I'm just stupid. Blech. Caster, me slash OP, as me. Uncle, as my homophobic uncle Danny. My dad's gay friend Sammy, my dad's girlfriend. So, my story takes place on the 4th of July, my last summer before my senior year of high school. It was my first summer visiting my dad in North Dakota. My dad's friend was hosting a 4th of July party, and we were all invited, including one of my dad's friends, who was very much gay. I was very much out as Pan at this point, but I didn't shove it down people's throats, just a rainbow bracelet I never took off. I still have it, and that was six years ago. My dad has also invited my uncle, who was in town anyway, for a visit, so it worked out. 
My uncle had no idea I was gay. I knew he wasn't comfortable with it, so I never told him. Like, not really a reason to, because he wasn't around much, and again, I didn't shove it down anyone's throat, so why make it a point? Here is where the story begins. So, we were all at the party, enjoying the weather, being eaten alive by mosquitoes, and just enjoying company. Then, Danny comes, a little late, but us gays are always fashionably late. Anyway, he comes wearing a cat brand hat. For those who don't know, cat is a brand of heavy machinery used in construction. My uncle does construction and uses cat brand a lot. He was very offended that this gay man was wearing a hat for a company. He gets in his face and starts talking crap. So my dad's girlfriend Sammy came to the rescue and says, Hey OP, Danny, uh, we need to go grab some more fireworks. Come with me? And me and Danny say, sure Sammy. The three of us leave and Sammy explains to me what was going on because I was absolutely oblivious and it honestly made me very upset. We get back to the party and my uncle is gone. I overhear my dad telling Sammy he kicked my uncle from the party and told him to wait at the house. The rest of the party goes fine and we finally head home after the fireworks. Once home, we all sit around the patio with my now very drunk uncle. He goes on this long rant about gays and how it's disgusting and how he could have taken the guy down. Usually, when my uncle is this drunk, he doesn't remember things the next morning, so I got some balls and looked at my uncle, sat up, cleared my throat and said, <clears throat> Uncle name, I have a girlfriend. I'm bi. It was easier to explain. I date girls and guys, so please shut up. The patio was silent. Sammy starts laughing. She was drunk too, and my uncle's wife said she was proud of me. My uncle drank some more and changed the subject. The rest of the night went all right. The next morning, I was sleeping on the couch while my uncle and his wife were packing up. My dad woke me up slightly so I could say bye before him and my uncle's wife left the house. My uncle gives me a hug and says bye before looking around to be sure we're alone and grabbing me by the throat. He says, don't think I forgot what you told me last night. We're going to have to, he squeezed, fix that. He pulled away and left the house. I was stunned and definitely wasn't going back to sleep. I didn't know what to do, I just sat there. I didn't tell anyone for a year. My brother moved in with my dad from Vegas to North Dakota, and my uncle came to visit him, so I told my brother. It took everything my brother had not to shoot my uncle for threatening me. I told my dad a few years after that. Sorry this story was kinda heavy. My uncle has gotten a lot better, but that still affects me to this day. I hope this counts as entitled parents. Sorry if not. Edit. My dad basically said, your uncle would never hurt you, he loves you, when I told him. Sadly, it's what I expected from him. You should have heard him when I told him about being taken advantage of. I'm gonna cut that section out, so I don't want that word on this channel. Posted by user Thursday Plurbinum. Titled, TLDR, Entitled Neighbor Tries to Make Us Replace Her Friends, threatens to sue us for refusing, and is called out for animal abuse and neglect. This is my first post to Reddit, so I'm sorry if the formatting sucks, and this is a little fuzzy because I've got horrifyingly bad memory, also sorry for the length. Some backstory. Our neighbor, Entitled Neighbor, has always been a little on the crazy side, and over the last year, since my mum and stepdad got married, she's been harassing us about different things, such as bringing my stepdad's horses from his old house to our current property, and building a tack shed that she thinks is an eyesore, even though it shouldn't be visible from her house. She dislikes my stepdad for no apparent reason, he's only met her once. She had the fence between our property and hers built to keep her goats from getting out, and when we moved my stepdad's five horses down, we put shock wire along the fence to keep them from leaning on it and damaging it. Entitled neighbor didn't like that our horses were grazing in the pasture next to her property, even though they didn't lean on the fence. About a week ago, entitled neighbor came over to our house when my parents weren't home. She knew it too. We have one vehicle that runs, and it was clearly not there. I heard her pull up, but I presumed that it was my parents and ignored her. When 10 minutes had passed and I hadn't heard anybody come in, I went out to investigate and found Entitled Neighbor sitting in her pickup on my driveway. I say, hi, do you need anything? And she marches over to me red-faced and says, you need to tell your new dad that his horses are destroying my fence. He has to replace it. 
My stepdad? Whatever. If he doesn't replace my fence or pay for the damage that his horses did to it, I'm going to sue him. Some other things were said, but I'm not going to repeat them here because there were various threats against my stepdad and mum. Entitled neighbor marches back to her pickup and leaves, and I went back into my house confused. One, she called my stepdad my new dad when she knew very well that my dad was alive. And two, I knew that the horses weren't leaning on her fence because there's shock wire on it, so they definitely knew better than to lean on it. I texted my mum about it and didn't think a whole lot about what had happened. Fast forward three days, and Entitled Neighbor is back to complain to my mum about our horse's grazing habits. I don't remember the exact conversation, but it went something like this. Why haven't you moved the fence? Why would we move your fence? Because it's a few feet on my side of the property line, and because your horses are damaging it. Note that she had moved her fence onto our property a few years ago. We didn't say anything because at the time we weren't using that pasture and it wasn't moved very much. My mum is already getting sick of this lady and tells her that there isn't anything wrong with her fence and she knows it. Well then, I'm going to take it down and you'll have to put it back up, back to where it should be. If you take that fence down, then our horses can get out and get seriously injured. I can take my fence down whenever I want to. At this point, my mum had enough. She blew up on Entitled Neighbor. Fine, take down your god dang fence, but if my horses get out onto the road and injured or killed, I will sue you. Hell, I should sue you for moving your fence onto our property without permission. I should take you to court for animal abuse and neglect, and I should file harassment charges against you for harassing my children. Get off my property now. Entitled Neighbor's face turned a shade of red that I didn't think existed outside of crayons and started to sputter a retort before my mum interrupted her again. I said, get off my god dang property. You're trespassing, and if you don't leave now, I will call the police. Entitled Neighbor sputters more, looking surprisingly fish-like before tripping back to her truck and leaving. She hasn't been back to our house since, and her fence hasn't been touched. I have no idea if my mum is going to take her to court or not, we don't have the money to pay any legal fees. Edit, yes, she will be reported on the animal neglect and abuse, regardless of the fence situation. I don't know if it's happened yet, because I'm not with my mum this week. Posted by user, Da Rosk, titled, Owner of local corporation assaults my father when confronted about illegal developments in our neighbourhood. Hello Reddit. I don't normally have stories to post here, but I got one from today, and I am ready to fight some folks. I am not on mobile, and English is my first language, so I have no excuse if I screw up the formatting. I live in a small neighborhood in the middle of a small city. I'm a 20-year-old college student staying in South Carolina with my family thanks to the pandemic. Across from our house was an undeveloped lot. It was completely empty and had lots of grass with very large, very pretty trees. My grandmother walks her dog in this space. When my family bought the house, we were told that the lot had minor historical significance, unclear on details, and that it was illegal to develop this lot. This was one of the reasons we purchased this house. Last Saturday, a large group of men arrived at the lot fully equipped to log the entire place. We were quite upset, but were not hasty considering we did not know the full situation. It was possible that someone had bought the lot and that we had been misinformed about the area. My dad is a biology professor and sometimes takes his students on field trips out there to do different activities. He has been extremely upstressed and upset about this whole ordeal. My dad tried to call the police at one point and they refused to come, saying they couldn't do anything about it. Now, the city council does not operate on Saturday where I live, so we could not complain to them immediately, which is why we phoned the police. After inquiring about it later in the week, we confirmed that it was in fact illegal for them to be developing this area. The city placed a stop work order, and we thought the situation was resolved. Today, these guys returned. Once again, on a Saturday, convenient. To keep removing the trees, despite the stop work order. My dad goes out and finds these signs are on the ground. They were most likely blown down by the recent surge of storms we've been having since these guys probably wouldn't have left them just laying around. My dad approaches them, shows them the signs, and makes sure they are aware of them. 
so they temporarily stop working and start making calls. Eventually, this truck pulls up and this guy hops out. I won't identify anyone unless I have a good reason to, but this man is the owner of a fairly large corporation which handles various development projects throughout the state. He is very loud, screaming everywhere, eventually finds my dad. He asks if my dad is the one making trouble and preventing his men from working. My dad explains that the city issued the order, not him. Of course, this guy goes on a cursing rampage and my dad just kind of ignores it and crosses the street. The police claimed to not be able to do anything when he called them last time, but my dad decides to try again. My dad gets on the phone with the police department. While my dad is explaining the situation, he is holding one of the signs. This dude comes over and asks if he can see it. My dad refuses and said he already handed the other one to his workers. This guy proceeds to backhand my dad to the neck and try to grab the sign while he's on the phone with the police. So obviously my dad is screaming that he is being assaulted and patrol cars start showing up very shortly. However, despite many eyewitness accounts from neighbors and his own workers, and of course the evidence in the call, the police still refuse to pursue this guy. At this point, my mum is understandably furious. She is very active in many communities throughout the area and has gained many contacts. She proceeds to call the mayor and explain what is happening. Within 30 minutes, there are multiple members of the city council on the scene. At the end of the day, the remaining trees were marked to indicate they cannot be removed and the area cannot be developed. The remaining three trees. The place looks like a fudging war zone. I feel extremely powerless and my dad has a massive bruise on his neck. I want to go to war, but my better judgment is holding me back. I feel like bringing attention to this on social media would be a useless venture and I don't want my family to be any more of a target. I am really hoping that this is over. Posted by user Biriniri, titled, How dare you speak to the bride's children like that? This isn't my story, but I had the pleasure of witnessing the whole situation. I used to be an au pair in Israel. I was with a lovely religious woman and her four kids, and just before I left, she married a wonderful man. Her parents are siblings, and are all rather religious and dressed modestly, except for her youngest sister. Let's call her Miriam, who has colored dyed hair, is covered in tattoos and piercings, and dresses however she likes. Furthermore, her two brothers and Miriam have a different, much shorter father, so the boys and eldest girls are all approaching or exceeding six foot, and Miriam is no taller than five foot three. Her whole family came over from America for the wedding, which took place outside on a hill and had a carpet aisle leading up to the chupa, the canopy under which the couple gets married, which was secured down with little stakes in the ground with hearts on them. Shortly before the ceremony, the youngest two kids thought that it would be fun to collect the stakes to hold, taking them out of the ground and risking the aisle flying away. Seeing this, Miriam immediately approached them and said, Guys, put them back right now. At which they looked sad and went about returning them. A guest, an orthodox Karen, became enraged. How dare you talk to those children like that? Who do you think you are? I'm their aunt. They were... She looked bewildered. The Karen, if possible, got even more furious and cut her off. That's ridiculous. Those are the bride's children? I know. She was starting to look annoyed and she says, she's my sister. I've met Deborah, and you're not her. I can't believe you have the audacity to try and claim. Look, you're talking about our other sister. This is my niece and my nephew, and it's my dad who's about to walk Leia down the aisle. Who exactly are you? The woman started spluttering indignantly, just as Miriam got called over for family photos, and with a last smug look, she turned on her heel and left Karen gaping. Posted by user Bamboo Grapefruit, titled, There is always someone too good for a face mask. So a friend went to a certain large hardware store that requires masks. They complied and wore a mask to get inside past the door. Once in the store, they pulled down the mask and began shopping. An employee noticed and told them to leave immediately for breaking the rules. They ran around the store, trying to hide from the employees, 
but eventually decided to leave. This person is now very upset that they have been singled out and attacked and chased. They wore the mask to get in? Isn't that enough? They claim it's not as easy to breathe in the mask and they're uncomfortable, so they shouldn't have to wear one. They are not like other people. This is too much for their respiratory system. Anybody else dealing with these people thinking they shouldn't have to wear a mask? I mean, I'm inside all the time, so I just don't see it. Posted by user The Send Reddit, titled, A lady thinks I have to be an adult to watch my brother and sister in the car. I'm 14. About three weeks ago, my mum was going to the store. Since my mum did not have enough masks, we had to stay in the car. My brother and sister were being loud and arguing, and two minutes later, the following happens. Karen comes up and says, Where's your mum? Oh, she's in the store. How old are you? Oh, I'm 14. Did your mum leave you in a running car? No, it's... gets cut off by Karen. You're not old enough to be watching your siblings in a running car. I say the car's not running, it's just the radio. That's it, I'm calling the police. She called the police, and then my mum came out of the store. My mum argued with the Karen, and Karen decided to park behind us so we couldn't leave. Luckily, we were able to leave because there was an open parking space in front of us. Posted by user LolzBot Original, titled, Karen Wants Free Food. So basically, my mum owns a restaurant in hospital and a Karen used to eat there every day, and after she would finish eating, she would leave a small amount of food on the plate, like two spoons, and then would say, this is not cooked well, and would storm off every day after we refused to give her any free food every freaking day. Then one fine day, it's about closing time, and the Karen arrived. She asked for food again, and what she asked for was the last plate left. My mum says to the cook, make the food, and I will go somewhere. Then the Karen finishes her food and says, This was nice, make me another plate. The employee then says, Ma'am, if you want us to make you in more, it will take half an hour at least. And she says, Okay, I'll wait. The employee then starts making the food while my mum returns. My mum was shocked, why was it taking them so long to make the order? The employee responds with, The woman asked me to make more. And as she steps out of the kitchen, she could hear the Karen making a scene because it was taking them so long. As she saw my mum, she rushed over to her and said, Why is it taking so long? My mum says, They told you it's going to take long. Please sit down. The Karen started mumbling about why is it taking so long? The food has finally done, and she ate it again and left a few spoons and went ahead and said to my mother, It was raw! and how she should get it for free. Mum snapped and tells her, it's not raw, you just want free food, and told the employees never to serve her again as she got louder. All the others there could hear the Karen was embarrassed, and the Karen didn't come again for two days, but lo and behold, she was there the third day. My mum goes and asks the employee what's going on, and the employee responds with, she's been sitting here for over an hour demanding food. When the employees refused her, she just sat there when she left, and never came back. Karen outs herself as office food thief. So, I work IT at a small non-profit. We have a kitchen and staff room, and supply free coffee, tea, milk, sugar, etc. During the pandemic, all staff were working from home, but for the past few weeks, some staff have been coming back gradually, mostly just for one to two days a week, including myself and unfortunately Karen. Now, Karen and I have had many run-ins over the years and suffice to say we don't get along. I don't tolerate her BS. A week or so after being back, Karen sends a condescending email to the office manager, OM, CCing all staff. In it, she says that while she accepts that the office kitchen had not been stocked while everyone was on lockdown, she's appalled that there is no bread, bagels, yogurts, etc. for staff that have returned. Office manager replies, adding CCing all staff, Karen, as a courtesy to staff, we provide free coffee, tea, milk, and sugar, all of which have been stocked. We have never proved free bread, bagels, yogurts, or other food. However, staff do keep personal food items in the refrigerator. Take that, Karen. God damn. 
Posted by user Icefire Wolf Lord, titled "Entitled Brother Is Angry He's Getting a New Phone." So my dad is buying my brother and I new phones. I'm getting an iPhone SE, and Entitled Brother is getting a Motorola G8. Entitled Brother is upset that he isn't also getting a new iPhone. I'm 15, and Entitled Brother is 12 for reference. Entitled Brother has a long track record of losing his phones. Actually, as I'm typing this, his current phone, Motorola G6, is lost. He doesn't know how to take care of a phone just yet. His is cracked, the case is gone, and now the phone is too. I, on the other hand, have severe anxiety, and my phone is a comfort tool. It's always in my pocket. I've never lost it once since getting the iPhone 6, and it only has one minor scratch on the screen protector. I completely understand why my father doesn't want to get him a super expensive phone, but Entitled Brother doesn't. When Dad said we were getting new phones, he was incredibly excited. Even more so when Dad said what kind of phone I was getting. The moment Entitled Brother heard Motorola, he gave a big sigh and flopped his arms into his lap, muttered about how he didn't want one, and gave an attitude when saying it was fine. See, I don't particularly like my father but my brother was a bit out of line, especially since I know if I made that remark, I would be grounded for a month. We love a double standard. Posted by user Bus Driver Jim, titled Marga Tourists. So this is another story from dealing with tourists who come off the cruise liners that dock in the small town near to where I live and my depot is based. Normally, there are specific coaches laid on for the boat passengers, but some travel on the service buses that I drive. This story takes place on a Sunday, as a large boat had come in, 3500 berth, and with it being a Sunday, it was a Sunday bus service. This meant there was a total of 8 buses for the day, and for some reason, there were no coaches laid on for the boat. This meant that the boat passengers either stayed on board, wandered around a small highland town where the only things open were a petrol station in a supermarket, or got the service bus to the nearby city. So, I'm taking a standard Volvo single-decker bus, maximum seating 45, standing 25, and am met by a swarm of passengers who want my bus, seeing as it's the express service. Needless to say, I'm hammered and the bus is full. The last four passengers I get were your stereotypical American tourists. I mean load, brash, and wear MAGA t-shirts and hats. Entitled Dad will be the dad, Entitled Mother will be the mum, EKs will be the kids, and me will be me. The Entitled Dad just says, one family ticket. No please, no telling me a destination. I say 21 pounds please, being polite because it was my last shift before I was on holiday for a week and he pulls out a bank card. I say, sorry, I don't take cards. It's cash only on this service, which was true. Other than London and a couple of other places, you couldn't pay by contactless or card at the time. And they say, what? That's outrageous, why not? Because our ticket machines aren't card readers. They can't be used to pay your fare. Well, I don't see why you can't just let us on. Because you haven't paid your fare and everyone else on board has, so why shouldn't you? He's now getting visibly angry and says, fine, and slams down a 50 pound note. Sorry, but I'm not allowed to accept any notes larger than a 20. Are you for real? Are you fudging stupid? Don't swear at me or you won't be getting on. Now either pay the fare or get off the bus because I'm running 15 minutes late now. At this point, Entitled Mother appears and pays the fare while giving me an evil glare. So I set off. The trip into the city was uneventful apart from a nice American who was beside my cab, taking scenic pictures and asking me some questions. We get to the bus station, and as I pull into the bay, the local inspector gets on before anyone gets off, and loudly states that any passengers off the boat need to make sure they get to the bus that leaves the station at 3pm to get back for the boat. Passengers had to be back on no later than 4.30pm for the boat, leaving with the tide at 5pm and that they wouldn't have time to get the bus to the nearby lock with its resident monster because you will not get back in time. So, I unload, then go off for my next couple of trips before finding myself back at the bus station at 15.15, and lo and behold, there's the Marga family. 
I pull into the bus station, and they rush up to me saying that they thought they'd miss the bus, and moaning that I was late. I said, you did miss the bus. I'm due away from here at 4.15. I'm on my break just now, before getting off the bus and closing the doors. I take my break, 4pm comes around, and I make my way back to the bus to start loading up for my last run back to the depot. Now the fun bit. When Marga family got on the bus the first time, I was the express. Going back, I was the same number, but not the express, so the trip went through nine towns and villages, rather than the three the express visited. Entitled Dad says, about time, we have a boat to catch. Piles on with his family, and Entitled Mother says, you better get us there on time. And I say, doubt it, this isn't the express. Before she could reply, my other passengers started to board, and I ignored her. So off we go, bang on time, and I decided to watch the Marga family in the mirror as I went from the express route onto the regular route. The look of shock when I went a different way was impressive. Entitled Mother comes up to the front of the bus and half yells, half asks, Where are you going? This isn't the way we came in. I did tell you this wasn't the express route. That's why the inspector told you to get on the 3pm bus back. Well, when do you get to place where the boat is? About 5.15 if I'm on time. Off she goes in a huff to her seat. The rest of the trip was uneventful, other than spending 10 minutes trying to explain to the local drunk that he wanted the other bus to get home. He's harmless, really. So, I didn't get to the boat till 5.25pm. Marga family runs off, only to see there's no boat. And he says, where's the boat gone? I say, see the oil rig in the Firth? Look slightly to the right. The boat was clearly in view halfway along the Firth. He said, how could you let us miss the boat? Nothing to do with me. You were told what time you had to be back for. You could have got a taxi, but you waited till I was leaving. Well, what are you going to do about it? Nothing. Not my problem. My job is to carry passengers from point A to point B safely, which I have done. Why didn't you phone the boat when you were going to be late? Uh, I don't like your attitude. Now fix your mistake. Not my mistake, your mistake. There's a taxi office at the bottom of the street. Where's your next port? An entitled mother says, Southampton. To make it clear for non-Brits, Southampton is on the south coast of the UK. I'm a good 700 miles north. Well, you better get going because that won't be cheap to get you there. Why won't you help? It's your job. The customer is always right. Well, if you won't help, then I'm going to call the police. The entitled dad says this before sitting on the floor beside the doors so I couldn't shut them. And I say, on you go. Don't see what that will do. Before apologizing to the only other passenger on board. Luckily, the police station is in the previous town and the police were there in 10 minutes. They listened to whatever entitled dad was saying after they moved him off the bus before telling him the same thing. It was his fault he missed the bus, his fault he missed the boat, and his problem as to how he was getting his family to the next port. Cue a screech from entitled mother and entitled kid, followed by entitled kid, who was about 15, running onto the bus to try and punch me before being grabbed by the other policemen. At this point, I was nearly 30 minutes late and wanting the bottles of cider in my fridge, so I asked if I could leave and headed off. Found out later from my neighbor, whose wife is a copper, that the family ended up getting a taxi to Southampton. Sorry it's a bit long. Stay safe, everyone, and hopefully the second wave won't hit. A taxi from Scotland to Southampton? That must have cost hundreds. Plus, I bet the driver charged for the return journey. About 20 years ago, I got a taxi from Hamilton to then my hometown of Lanark. That was £40 for a relatively short journey. 15 years later, I got a pre-booked taxi from my hometown to Glasgow. It cost, I think, £65. I wonder if Jim's bus depot to Southampton would be nearer... £1,000? After 5pm on a Sunday, lol. Be cheaper to get a plane ticket home, lol. Taxi to airport, flight to London, taxi from London to Southampton would be quicker. Probably cheaper too. Posted by user the123king-reddit, titled, I couldn't get the files off your laptop, but I might get something else. It's a normal lockdown Friday morning. 
I'm sat in the office, testing a new Windows build on our laptops, slurping coffee, and killing the time reading TFTS whilst I watch some progress bars move. Da -da ling goes Outlook, as a new ticket comes in. God, I thought I turned those speakers down. Half deaf, I open up my emails and see who needs their projectors plugged in today. No, I'm wrong. Laptop deleted my profile and all my documents are gone. Crap. So I tell the user to power off his laptop, not to use it, as the less a machine is used, the more likely it is to recover data. I stress the importance of not using it until it's in the office and to drop it in on Monday morning. Monday comes around. I get handed the laptop and the poor guy holding it doesn't look well, like he's got hay fever or something. Not surprising given it's summer here and no one's been cutting grass for a while. I shrug it off, take the laptop in and start data recovery. So the laptop plods along, generally not finding anything readable, just a bunch of garbled documents. There's really not much here to recover. I wasn't expecting to find much and I warned the user that in the first place, chances are slim, but I will try. At the end of the day, I informed the user that I didn't find much that was readable, but stuck it all in a zip file and sent it anyway. He says he'll be in tomorrow to pick it up. It's Tuesday and our lovely lost all his work user opens the door, and he still looks like he's been rubbing his face in a bag full of pollen. I reiterate my lack of success. I tell him it's probably best to back up work to USB sticks when away from the office and not to trust the laptops, as this can happen when laptops run out of power outside the network. It's not usually a problem because 99% of staff only use their laptops in the office anyway, though lockdown has done a number on that. Anyway, I ask him if he's got hay fever or something and he says, no, he replies. Do you know anyone else who looks this ill? Nope, just thought it was hay fever. Well, you know someone now, this is COVID. I've been self-isolating for four weeks. First time I've been out was to drop this in. Fah, suffice to say, I have sanitized everything in the office I could. For damn sake, notify your supervisor that some frickwad walked into the office sick with COVID-19 and no mask on. That's probably a breach of company policies too, given how many companies quickly wrote up policies on COVID-19 quarantine and sick leave. That guy's manager needs to lay down the law on him and other staff about procedures if they need tech support while sick. Also, if anyone shows up looking sick, I wouldn't trust that they say it's just allergies or such. Too many people got COVID-19 from someone that just had a chronic cough or asymptomatic altogether. Not to mention if OP does get sick, this is a pretty strong case for them to be covered by workers' comp, or at the very least, state disability if they do test COVID positive. That employee is a complete dingus. Posted by user Tropico Stars, titled, My half-sister and her husband's family took over my backyard. The night prior, my half-sister had called my dad to ask if she and her husband's family could come over to enjoy our backyard and swim in the pool. He agreed. My dad told me the plans the morning of. I was pretty annoyed with all this on short notice because both my parents were out that day and I was going to be the only one home. I also had a dental appointment for the same day, so I couldn't even properly host all these people. It felt like they dumped all of this on me. It's only three hours max, my dad told me. So, for some background info, my brother-in-law is a creep. He's known in the family for attempting to take advantage of my sister and just being an all-round pervert and a-hole. He makes it uncomfortable for me to be around my sister and my nephews, so I generally try to avoid them. Because of this, I'm not very close with them. Anyways, the day comes and I luckily end up leaving for my dental appointment before anyone gets to my house. I come back after two and a half hours, hoping they'd be leaving soon, or at least my mum would be home soon enough to host and go out there with them. Nope, it's all me, my half-sister and her husband, their three kids, and three kids from the husband's side of the family. As soon as I arrive, they're all screeching and being chaotic AF. I could already tell the neighbours were going to hate us after this. They're blaring full-blast pop music, running around shooting water guns everywhere, ordering bare food, and just generally wilding out. They even popped and ruined some of our pool floaties. 
Because I don't want to look like an a-hole, I step out to say hi. My brother-in-law immediately starts harassing me in front of all these kids while my half-sister is a couple feet away. He starts complimenting me and telling me I smell really nice, even asking for my perfume. He literally got closer to me and sniffed me. He then started asking if I have weed and telling me I can trust him, basically attempting to manipulate me. I'm 17, this man is in his late 30s. The age difference and family dynamic I have with him makes this completely inappropriate, as well as my nephews being around to witness all of this. I just kind of laughed off the sniffing thing and denied having any weed. He even had the audacity to ask me why I wouldn't want to come out and swim with all of them, as if I'd ever wear a bikini in front of this creepy man. All of this made me super anxious, so I just hid in my room. They ended up staying for literally the whole day, continuing to party. Eventually, my parents got home and started hosting. I told my parents what happened and about the anxiety it caused, but they didn't seem to care. I can't tell who the real entitled person here was, my sister and her husband for taking over and trashing the empty house, or my dad for assuming I'd be willing to deal with their BS. Posted by user Leon Olmsley, titled, Bridesmaid wants to be the center of attention at reception, gets it in the worst way possible. So back in the before times of January 2020, when you could go to parties, I was invited as a plus one to a wedding. The guest, my friend Jen, not her real name, had asked if I wanted to go with her to her cousin's wedding. Her cousin is the bridesmaid. She's a great person, but not very comfortable in big crowds. I was told that this was a 250 person wedding and she needs the support. I had nothing planned for that day, plus it was free food and cake, plus Jen is my friend, so I agreed. The wedding went great in my opinion, as well as any wedding can be when you don't know the bride or groom. The officiant went through their speech, bride and groom exchanged rings, families cried, and the two were married. Happy times, ceremony finishes without a hitch. So it's the reception where things got messy. The reception was held in this park lodge overlooking a frozen lake, dinner was served, and Jen and I made conversation with people at our table. Then comes the clinking of glasses. The wedding party are going to make their speeches, and since there's like 250 people at this place, there's a microphone so that everyone can hear. The groom's men and bride's maids make speeches on how they know the groom and bride respectively until it comes to one of the bridesmaids. I call her Kaylee simply because her real name is like Kaylee in that her parents gave her an uncommon spelling of a common name, one that a Starbucks barista would unintentionally misspell and get yelled at for misspelling. If memory serves me, she was one of the bridesmaid's friends from college who, because of her closeness, stands on the outskirts of bride's family. An honorary family member, if you will. Kaylee's speech is more of the same. How she knows the bride, and how she's so happy for her and groom marrying, and how lovely of a couple they make. So far, so good. Here's how it ends, or at least how I remember it. Kaylee says, I am so happy for the two of them, and because we're here, celebrating love, I wanted to let everyone know something great. Pauses for dramatic effect. My boyfriend proposed last night, and I said yes. We're getting married too. There is silence after she says this. Kaylee probably expected a cheer or a congratulation or something to her news. Not silence. As I was looking around, there are looks of anger and content at the bridemaid who was trying to hijack the reception. I'm pretty sure they had the same thought I had. Who the hell does this woman think she is? She says, so get ready to mark your calendars. She adds that little giggle as if she just made a funny joke. Haha. <laughs> this is where all hell breaks out. The guests start booing Kaylee, throwing napkins and dinner rolls at her. She starts crying, asking why people aren't happy for her until she's escorted out by who I assume was her fiance. From what I remember, the bride and groom disappear as well while the event staff clean up the mess. The bride and groom come back and apologize for the disruption. Neither one of them condoned her announcing her engagement and would like to get back on track. 
Once dinner is done, there's dancing and cake cutting, and soon all is forgotten. I'm happy to have gone, if only for the fact that I have a great story to tell. Except, it doesn't end there. Kaylee apparently wanted the last word. So, according to my friend, who heard it from her cousin, she decides to vague post about it on social media. Kaylee says, I was at the wedding of one of my dearest friends, celebrating love, and I was kicked out. Her and Groom's families threw stuff at me. I've never been so scared in my entire life, and bride and groom couldn't even bother apologizing to me for what their family did. I'm going to have to reevaluate my friendships. Initially, she was getting sympathy from her followers. However, someone from the wedding party had posted a video of her announcing her engagement at the reception. That's when the public opinion turned on Kay Lee again. Accusations of how could she announce her engagement at someone's wedding, calling her an attention tramp. They were out for blood, they were. She deleted the post, but people wrote on her wall, calling her awful names for what she did, so inevitably she deactivated her account. And it didn't end there. From what I heard, she also got phone calls from people asking how she could do that to someone she considered a friend. I'm pretty sure many of her friends are no longer speaking to her. Now, I believe that kicking her out of the reception was justified, and so was posting the video on her social media, but the harassment did go too far, even if she was a total tramp for stealing the bride and groom's thunder. She wanted attention so bad that she got it in the worst way possible. Posted by user Caddy Mouse, titled Another Karen Walks Into a Veterinary Clinic. I don't want to spam this sub too much, but I have many a Karen slash Chad story from my time so far as a veterinary nurse. Content warning, there's some graphic but toned down descriptions of injuries to multiple animals. This is also another long one, and there's really no way to TLDR at the end. This particular event happened maybe a week after I finished my bachelor's degree some years ago, but it has lingered with me. Obviously, with so much time elapsing, all conversation will be paraphrasing, but I'll be as accurate as I can be. Buckle up, buckaroos. A woman calls the clinic, sounding very calm, and the receptionist taking the call hands me the phone so I can triage and establish urgency and get things ready. Karen says, I have a breeding pair of guinea pigs that got into a bit of a scuffle, and there's some scratches that need a bit of attention. Can I bring them in? I say, absolutely. Can you describe the injuries so I can either schedule a time later this afternoon, or get you squeezed in as an emergency? She says, uh... And there's a lengthy pause. I say, can you see them now? Yes. Okay, are they both breathing? Yes. Can you please describe the injuries? Scratches can look minor, but be worse than they appear. And even minor scratches will require precautionary antibiotics. She's like, um... Well, the male has some scratches to the face and front legs area. The female has some scratches to the abdomen, which are bleeding a bit. Probably just require a clean and stitches. Okay, well, it sounds pretty important that we see them relatively soon. Can you be here within an hour? Yeah, I'm only a few minutes away. Great. When you get to the clinic, give the receptionist your name and mention that Caddy Mouse triaged your pets over the phone. They'll come get me so that I can evaluate the situation and get one of the vets to give the instructions for me to go through wound care and they'll get antibiotics ready. This seemed pretty run of the mill. No alarm bells ringing. Boy, was I in for a rude shock when our Karen makes her entrance. To her credit, she did arrive within 20 minutes but her description of what the wounds were on the female was so very, very downplayed. She gave me the male first, and his scratches were pretty superficial, though one would require stitches as it exposed muscle in his shoulder. I called Boss Dude in to start working on the male quickly so that I could triage the female. Admittedly, I made a mistake not checking the female first. The male was making it difficult to get to the female, and I wanted to get him out of the way that to then get to the female. She was under a lot of blood-stained paper and cloth. This is when alarm bells started. I moved the paper and cloth, and the wounds described as superficial were actually fatal. Her torso was absolutely shredded, and internal organs were spilling out. 
There were lacerations to internals as well, and making it worse, the wood chips she used in her cage were all throughout the innards that were now exposed. My blood begins to boil, but I need to keep my cool. I take a breath. Boss dude looks at me and knows something is very wrong. I said, you said that her wounds were minor and would just need a clean and maybe some stitches. Boss dude peers into the carrier and starts turning red, then returns to patching up the mail, knowing what I'll say next. She says, well, I didn't want to be judged over the phone. Judgmental people are the worst. These wounds are in no way minor. There is literally nothing we can do to save her. I, sure you can. Just give things a clean, stitch her up, give her antibiotics, and send her home. She'll be fine. No, that's not how it's going to work. She's got irreparable damage and has lost an enormous amount of blood. We don't have guinea pig blood transfusions on hand, even if we were able to fix her extremely bloody serious injuries. I'm sorry, but this will need to be a euthanasia case. No, no, she needs to be patched up so I can get her breeding again. Absolutely not. Even if we could just patch her up, she would never be able to breed again because her uterus is so damaged that a pregnancy would likely kill her from a rupture. You don't get it. I need her patched up so that she can breed. I need to make money somehow. A few dollars is more important than the welfare of your animals? That's horrendous. There is absolutely nothing we can do except euthanize her because right now she is suffering. No, you're not euthanizing her. I refuse. Boss dude says, Miss Karen, if you do not give us permission to euthanize her, I will be forced to go over your head and get permission from animal welfare authorities. Pfft, I highly doubt that's even a thing. Don't threaten me again. I'll call police and take you to court for animal abuse. I'm sorry, what? You want to have us charged with animal abuse for euthanizing an animal that cannot be saved? Boss dude puts the mail in a cardboard box and calls RSPCA. She says, ugh, I'm calling the police. You're awful people. And sure enough, she calls the emergency number rather than the local police station and makes a whole lot of wildly false accusations. It only takes a few minutes for Boss Dude to get the authority. He's measuring up the barbiturates when the police arrived. We have to now stop what we're doing and show them the notes taken from her original call when I told her to come in, look at the state of the female, one of the officers threw up, and the other one wasn't looking so well either. The officer not puking calls the RSPCA to confirm the authority given and match up a code boss dude put in the file notes before measuring up the barbiturates. It all checks out. They remove her from the consult room, we administer the barbiturates, clean up the female so that it's she's easy for the star of this story to bury, and give Karen the mail and the body of the female in separate cardboard carriers. Police stick around to make sure she pays, all the while she's hurling abuse at us. You would think that would be the end of the story. You would be wrong. Less than 48 hours later, she shows up without calling with a very poorly large pet snake. I'm standing there absolutely stunned and thinking, oh, there is no way you've done what I think you've done. I thought wrong. This absolute monstrosity of a human thought it would be a brilliant idea to feed the barbiturate-filled deceased female guinea pig to her snake because in her words, it was easier than waiting for a rabbit to thaw and the smell of blood would appeal to the snake. He can be a picky eater. This snake was digesting a guinea pig full of barbiturates. She fed what is essentially death potion to a damned snake. We check the vitals and do some imaging to see if there's any chance we can save this snake. And one of the other nursing staff contacts RSPCA, knowing that all hell is about to break loose. Once again, there is nothing we can do. Once again, we have to euthanize one of her animals because of her stupidity. Once again, she refuses to give the permission to euthanize. Once again, she calls the police on the emergency number. Once again, we receive the authority from RSPCA to euthanize. Once again, we need to delay when the police arrive. It's the same police attending, they check the notes and authority, give us the go-ahead, drag her into the reception area as she once again hurls abuse and refuses to pay. One of the officers contacts the RSPCA to see if there's any reason to arrest her for animal abuse, and there is. There is a long pattern of her showing up to clinics with animals in horrendous states, almost always requiring euthanasia. 
she left the clinic in cuffs. A few months later, we were summoned to give testimony in court. The only good thing about this fiasco is that she had the proverbial book thrown at her as this was not even her first time in court for animal neglect and abuse. She received a few months custodial sentence, fined a significant amount which would be donated to an animal rescue organization, and had a legal ban on owning animals, which meant all her animals were seized and the healthy few were rehomed. Majority were not able to be saved. And to this day, RSPCA do random checks to make sure she has no animals. If you stuck with me for this roller coaster, thank you. I have many more stories like this, so let me know if you want me to post some more of the standouts. And I'm just here disgusted that they did this in Australia, because the RSPCA is in Australia. And I know that illegal breeding is so far and wide back home, but dear lord, that makes me so sad. Why do they continually do that? That's so disheartening. We have a comment from Camera Dude that says, A complete sociopath. I doubt she saw her animals as anything more than just money makers that require food. The fact she thought a guinea pig that was virtually gutted would be fine with just a shot and some stitches is appalling. We can only be grateful that sometimes the justice system works and she was banned from owning any more animals. You ride in the money. My husband has a PhD in psych, and he said she's a textbook sociopath. When what works out to literally on a few dollars of profit from a litter is more important than having a healthy breeding female, I just... I see red. It takes everything in me not to lose my cool. As a student, I did a lot of rescues from breeders like her, so my hatred runs deep. It's not just professional, it is personal on the deepest, most visceral level. In a reply to an earlier comment, I mentioned that it's been about five years since this incident, and it still shows up vividly in dreams fairly regularly. One does not easily forget that sight. I obviously turned it down for Reddit, because I generally try not to emotionally scar people too much. It almost made me reconsider my career. I took my annual leave to reflect on what I wanted, and applied for a position at a university to better my qualifications with a master's degree instead of turning away. Even on the awful days like that one, I know vet nursing is where I'm meant to be. You have no idea how good it was for my boss and I when we heard the book was being thrown at her. There's so many cases where people get a slap on the wrist, essentially getting away with their ill treatment of animals. We weren't expecting much, so that sentencing verdict was music to our ears and warmed our hearts. We're paying them to work. Don't give them warm drinks unless they're going to reduce the fee. Another day, another entitled Karen. This is literally happening as I type. So for those who haven't seen my recent posts, I'm a veterinary nurse living near the Alps in Southeast Australia. It's winter, it's cold, and it's calving season. Myself and boss dude have been called out to a farm to assist with a bovine birth. It's the cow's first labor, so the farmer wanted us nearby just in case. It's just after 4am, and we've been here since 11pm. It's also negative 5 degrees Celsius, 23 degrees Fahrenheit for the Fahrenheit fam. I have thermals on under my scrubs, and several other layers, but I'm still very cold. Adding to my situation, I'm also in the second trimester of pregnancy, so prolonged cold really isn't something I want to be. The farmer is one of our regulars, and he's lovely. When I started shivering, he went inside and grabbed some blankets for me to wrap myself up in while we sit and monitor this labor. A few minutes later, his phone rings, and it's his wife yelling at him. He rolls his eyes and says, It's freezing out here. The VN is pregnant, and it's just a blanket. And hangs up. A little while later, he asks Boss Dude and I if we'd like a warm drink to keep us going, returns to the house, and comes out with a thermos for both of us. Coffee is exactly what I needed for the warmth and for the caffeine to keep my mind alert during these awful hours. Farmer's wife comes outside and starts screaming at the farmer, then comes down to us and demands that we either give her the warm drinks we've already started drinking, or that she will expect a fee reduction for using their resources while on the job. There's a pandemic, so what is she gonna do if we give back the drinks that have been exposed to our saliva? Sure, Karen. We'll keep the coffees and take off the 70 cents it costs to make two thermoses of coffee, you're still paying for our time after hours on site. And now she's demanding a further discount to cover the cost of washing the blankets, which have some hay on them. Or, 
Maybe we should just go home and not ensure the welfare of your cow and her calf. We've still got a few more hours here. Wonder how many more cents she'll demand gets knocked off our fee. Because our husband has the audacity to be kind enough to make us comfortable while we wait in literal freezing conditions. Some people. Posted by user Ali Hope, titled, My mum is stealing money from me. I am 22 female. I am currently no contact with everyone on my dad's side. They stopped talking to me when I was 12 after my dad lost a custody battle. Recently, my grandfather reconnected with my sister after she reached out to him. He wants a relationship with me, but I was against it after years of dealing with abandonment issues. About a year ago, he wanted to make amends. My mum agreed to take $7,500 from him to be used to help me get a car. He felt bad and wanted to help out. I didn't want to take his money, but she took it on my behalf for me. I didn't want money from someone I didn't want a relationship with. It's been around a year, and my mum took this money and never used it for a car or anything. When I confronted her about it, she said that she's using the money for stuff like insurance, which I don't even have. She then said she used it for pet food for when I was working less hours. If I talk about the car aspect, she says about how I never wanted the money, and she says how there is an agreement that the money is used for my expenses. I don't trust her with the money, and she told me not much of that was left. My sister is now giving me her old car for $500. I asked my mum if she could give my sister the $500 and give me $7,000 to invest in my future. She said I was not given the money because I can't be trusted with it. I mentioned I was planning on getting my first tattoo and a PC soon, and she said this is why I can't be trusted with money. I was going to put aside some for moving, a new PC, and a new car, because my sister's car is a 2004, so I think it would last two years at most. She said this is not what the money is for, so she refuses to let me have any, and keeps saying how she will get the money that she had to use back. When I told her that I would reach out to my grandfather if she didn't either return the money or give it to me, she threatened to kick me out. Now she gets to keep the money that I never asked for, and I will never see a penny of it. I have no idea what to do about this, and it really bothers me. Posted by user Coffee Bean Scene, titled, I've been waiting three whole minutes. This service is ridiculous. So as a lot of you people know, Pubs opened on the 4th of July in Britain, and due to the pandemic, they've all been closed for months, and can only open as long as we follow the government rules. Our pub used to run as most do, with customers entering, walking up to the bar, ordering, paying, and waiting for a drink, and then choosing where they want to sit. The rules now are that all customers have to wait to be seated by FOH and have their details taken. We have to then do waitress and table service, and after the waiter has taken the order and payment, we get a ticket at the bar and start making drinks. The waiter then comes and collects the drinks and takes them to the customer at their tables. Customers are not allowed to come to the bar, stand at the bar to drink, or walk around at the bar from table to table. What with it being the first day of business? We weren't sure what to expect or how many staff we might need, so we started with two bar staff, one waitress, and one member of staff acting as FOH. We also had an app made with a booking system so we wouldn't get too overwhelmed and could stick to the rules of limiting the amount of people in the building at any one time. The day started off fine. The general manager, myself, and another bar staff member opened up, over-prepared, and went through the plan of action for the day. The waitress came in, and then we started our day. The majority of the customers were lovely, happy to be out, and patient knowing that the pandemic meant everything was different for pubs and bars. They even appeared to be giving correct contact details and taking the whole thing quite seriously, as they should do. We didn't have any Mickey Mouses or McLovins. That was until Karen came in. Her friend had booked a table for two. We had a booking deal. They paid £5 per person to insure the table, and then get a free drink. The selected drinks are usually more than £5. They spent a good 5-10 to 10 minutes choosing their first drinks. We made them, the waitress took them over, and everything was fine. However, me and the general manager had already made eyebrow moves at each other to indicate Karen alert. The waitress also noticed explaining how Karen had been short with her when ordering, but gave Karen the benefit of the doubts, saying that she thought she might have been interrupting Karen and the woman's date. 
roll on the second round. The bar was now getting busy, almost filling to capacity, and still with just me and another worker on the bar. We were mixing drinks as fast as we could, but anyone who makes cocktails knows you can only go as fast as you can shake Boston. As soon as one ticket was being completed, another four were printed. The GM has also started taking orders as the waitress was getting a bit overwhelmed, but that just meant that double the orders were coming in for us. Karen ordered a bottle of wine. Okay, cool. So I find the correct wine, get the waitress to check it's the correct wine with Karen, and then uncork it. The waitress comes back to the bar, Karen's changed her mind. Doesn't want this wine at all. Decides to get a glass of something else instead. Fine. A few minutes later, general manager comes over stressing, where's her order? She says she's been waiting an extortionate amount of time. Starts to berate me a bit because I, as a manager, should be faster and should be keeping an eye out on tickets and my staff, etc, etc. I asked the general manager what the order was. Karen had ordered two complicated cocktails. Okay, fine. We are a little backed up. I look through my tickets and speak to my colleague. We haven't made it yet. I look at the ticket machine with the three tickets that had not long printed. Her order was there. She had placed the order literally three minutes before complaining. I showed my manager and also showed her the two tickets I needed to make before Karen's. My general manager smiled and apologized. I knew she was just stressed and told her it was fine and I'd get the Karen's ticket when I got to it, in order. My general manager asked to try and make it fast, as Karen was now loudly complaining to anyone that would listen. Which was basically no one, as everyone was just trying to have a good time and can see that we are slammed. Karen waited a full 8-9 to nine minutes for her two cocktails to be made. Two different ones, both with quite a few ingredients, when we were at full capacity. She still moaned about the wait when she left as she had other important things to do, said the service was bad and she was in a rush, and why didn't we understand that the customer in a rush should be served first? Like I give a crap, don't drink fancy cocktails before you do stuff if it's so important. I finished my eight and a half hour shift, I hadn't eaten, I hadn't sat down, had only managed to pee and smoke once all shift. Had a sanitizer station fall off the wall and cover me in hand sanitizer, so I spent the second half of my shift with half my chest and one arm all damp and sticky while it dried, and made zero in tips. I walked home glad that I had worked the earlier shift, ate the salad I had packed for my lunch, and passed out on the sofa, ready to do it all again the next day. Hope you got your important crap done, Karen Hun. So important you needed to do it drunk. Posted by user Orange Cookies, titled Entitled Doctor Won't Take Your Fired for an Answer. Our cast are me, then 47 female, Doctor Entitled, my mother, the insurance provider, and Doctor Awesome. Three and a half years ago, I made an appointment to get new prescriptions for three medications I'd been taking, and only got one of them filled at the appointment. Doctor Entitled took my blood pressure and weight and wrote one of the prescriptions that I needed for blood pressure medication. I asked her for prescriptions for the other two meds, but she spent most of the 15 minutes allotted for this prescription talking about weight loss, not about my other two medications. Now, while I understood I needed to lose a few pounds, I couldn't be as physically active as I'd liked because of knee pain, and a 15 minute medication appointment was not the appropriate time for a weight loss discussion. I say, Bipolar disorder has nothing to do with my weight. If you can't write these other two prescriptions, could you at least refer me to someone who can? If you lose weight, it will help your mood. She refused to refer me to another provider for the other two medications, a mood stabilizer and an antidepressant. I walked out of Dr. Entitled's office with only one prescription and ended up feeling like I'd wasted my time. Travel time to the clinic, plus time in the waiting room, plus time in the doctor's office, plus time in the pharmacy, equals three hours spent to get only one prescription filled. I ended up going to a walk-in clinic at the county hospital to get the other two meds. The next day, I called Dr. Entitled's office to let her know I was firing her, and my insurance provider to explain the reason for my self-referral to the county hospital. Insurance provider says, We are very sorry this happened. You acted appropriately, and you can absolutely switch to another doctor. So I did. But of course, you know the story doesn't end there. A couple days after I fired Doctor Entitled, 
I got a text from Mum saying your doctor, Doctor Entitled, called. She wants you to come back in and see her. Um, how about no? I was livid and frankly creeped out that Doctor Entitled had called my mother. Mum was my emergency contact, but Doctor Entitled getting angry over being fired was not an emergency. I got phone calls and emails from Doctor Entitled's office for months, telling me to come back in for a visit. Each time, I would reply that I'd fired her and changed doctors. It took the threat of an anti-harassment order to get her to leave me alone. Meanwhile, I saw Dr. Rawson. After my very first visit with Dr. Rawson, I had referrals for knee x-rays and physical therapy, for what turned out to be severe osteoarthritis. Posted by user Chitos Issei, titled, an entitled mother wants to force me to marry her son and disrespects me. She ends up scared. Good morning to all. I'll explain my first direct encounter with an entitled mother. I'd seen entitled people before, but I'd never faced a person until this case. The story takes place more or less a week before confinement in Spain, March 9th, a few weeks before I turned 21. It's transcribed from a WhatsApp audio that I sent to an acquaintance who knows about my relationship. I don't consider myself a very pretty girl. In fact, quite normal, but yes, striking for my style. It's like a combination between goth and when Edward Scissorhands put on a shirt with pants and suspenders. Only with long hair, around 70 centimeters, measuring 169. Green eyes with dark circles, a murderous glance, and a Slavic face although not a model. That day, I went out with my partner to have a drink in some bar. We don't usually do it because of the age difference and because it would look bad in his work. He's in high school, and in my case, when I was a student, baccalaureate teacher. He's a good teacher, and many students love him, while he has co-workers who hate him and would take advantage of any excuse. We sat for half an hour on the terrace of an almost empty cafe drinking coffee, and at some point, a man came towards us. I'd seen him walk past us with a woman, his mother, and sit on the same terrace, right in front of me with several separation tables. He stood in front of us, looking at us. I looked at my partner, thinking that maybe he was a graduate student of his. I couldn't say if he was older than me, he was tall and big. He even had a short beard, but I've met guys like him who seem to be 25, but are actually 16 years old. P is partner, MS is man, son of entitled mother, EM is entitled mother. My partner says, is something wrong, boy? The man says, after waking up from a kind of trance, oh, hi, I would like to take advantage of the opportunity and ask your daughter to go out. He looks at me, and I put my, if you come close to me, you'll be left without an arm gaze. I would like to exchange numbers, and that maybe meet someday. I was a little surprised, but I was funny about asking your daughter out. I looked at my partner, and he gave me a look that I should answer, and besides, he was also laughing and needed to see how it went on. I say, um, no. What? Why? Me, trying not to frown, says, because not? I don't need an explanation. But, then he looked at my partner and muttered before going back to his table, okay. I don't like that they came up to me but if they're kind, it's bearable. And I can still say that the couple of balls you must have to ask a girl who goes with her father for that. The problem is when they start to insist or sound desperate. The man returned to his table, and my partner was joking a little bit about what had just happened, but soon we returned to the topic of conversation. Occasionally, I noticed something strange at the other table, and when I took a look, it seemed to me that the mother was looking towards us, but I thought it was just my imagination. About 15 minutes later, my partner came in to pay. I like to pay for myself, but he always insists. And I took the opportunity to quickly see my mobile's notifications. Then, I heard a kind of sigh growl. Next to the chair he occupied was that short woman, possibly over the age of 40, and incredibly similar to the Karen stereotype, with short blonde hair pulled back into a small ponytail. Why have you rejected my son? A bit confused, I look around for that boy, but he was nowhere to be found. Sorry? What did you say? Entitled mother, in a tone of theatrical superiority, with its separations between words, Why? 
Have you rejected my son? He has come very politely to ask you if you would be his girlfriend, and you have rejected him. Not really. He asked me to go out, and I said no. I don't even know who you are. Did you not understand? He has bothered going here to ask you if you would be his girlfriend. You could have a little respect for him. Well, I didn't hit him. I just rejected him. Right, sure. I have seen how you have been laughing at him. Surely it was your father who said to reject him. Actually, I don't know what conclusion they draw that my partner is my father. We aren't physically alike. No one can decide who I date. Also, I already have a partner. He's. I looked inside the cafe, but he was not there, so I assumed he went to the bathroom. I have been looking at you. You would be a good wife. My son is a good man. Surely that boyfriend of yours doesn't exist. You just made it up. Me, getting up to start leaving, say, "Ma'am, I don't know you. Stop bothering me. If your son is looking for a girlfriend, download Tinder or some of that other crap." How dare you disrespect? I don't know if she refers to herself or her son. So, from those pervert pages, you get all your boyfriends? I don't know what my face should be like at this time. I was about to laugh all over his face, and besides, surely many people were watching us as they passed. I say, ma'am, leave it now. Not until you accept my son. He will educate you to be a good wife. I want grandchildren. Well. That's when I saw my partner coming out of the cafe and walking over to me while taking out a cigarette. Who's this? Your new friend? <laughs> no, sir. I know you told this one to reject my son. What? But I won't allow disrespect for my son or me. Besides, being ill-educated, she's a cheeky one. She has confessed that she is dating several men at once from those pervert pages. Oh yeah. He eyed me suggestively as he tried to hold back his laughter. <gasps> Don't tell me. Yes, I have reason to believe that she has been bringing men into your home and charging for it. I was freaking out at this point. My partner opened his eyes wide in surprise as the mother crossed her arms, looking at me with a superior smile. He looked at me and hugged me around the waist. Wow! Don't tell me it's just the price of coffee, or do I have a discount, love? I slapped him on the chest as I put an arm around his shoulder and giggled. It also discounts the time I spent at your house, the movies, the books, and the perfume you wear. We kiss quickly, but not as much as that mother changing skin tone and expression. Her skin paled almost like mine, and her face was between awe and dread so great that she could barely scream before turning and leaving quickly. We also left, not that we will attract more attention. Posted by user Silence of the Ham six seven four, titled "Please don't be rude to your servers." Not as exciting as the other posts on here, I know, but I'm seventeen and work in a small news agent slash sweet shop in a small town, mostly populated by elderly people. Most of them are lovely, but you get the odd one that thinks they're entitled to everything. This happened about a month ago. And due to the virus, I'm working in the shop on Saturdays on my own because it's too small to social distance with my bosses. I'm fine with this and actually like being on my own and focusing on stocking up sweets, making up, and decorating chocolate boxes, etc. Also, due to the virus, my bosses decided to start delivering boxes of sweets, and due to the overwhelming response, delivered them by pre-order only. Anyways, so I'm at work and the phone rings. I answer, and it's this older woman. She asks if we can deliver a box to her son, who lives about twenty minutes away today. I should also mention that I got this call at about eleven. We close at one, and to pack everything away, I need to start closing by twelve thirty, which leaves a little time to make up a sweet box as well as serve customers and do all the other jobs that I need to do. I told her we couldn't get the box out today, as we do them by pre-order only, but that we could tomorrow. She started literally whining down the phone, like some spoiled kid who'd been told no, saying, "Is there really no way we can get one out today? And she really, really needs one today." I asked her if she was aware of the sweet shop's Facebook page. She said she was. I asked her if she wouldn't mind directing any orders over there because my boss can receive them directly and answer any questions. 
Woman on the phone started calling me unhelpful. I said again she can contact my boss if she doesn't want to speak to me, and she says she finds it difficult to get on Facebook because she's of a certain age. So I offer to take a message for her to pass on to my boss, and she switches to the whiny voice again saying, is that really all that you can do? At this point, I start getting a little irritated and tell her I've given her the option to speak to my bosses if she wants to. She started telling me that I have a bad attitude and calling me useless, etc. So I say, I've said I can take a message for you and that's all I can do for you, I'm afraid. Goodbye. And I hang up the phone. I don't know if it was the shock of me standing up for myself or the anger of how rude she was to me, but after I hung up, I proceeded to burst into tears. I had to shut up the shop and sit in the back and call my boyfriend, telling him everything that just happened until I calmed down. After that, I texted my boss letting them know what happened, and that I had closed up the shop for about 15 minutes and then reopened and carried on as normal. My boss was completely fine about the whole thing, and really, really nice. In fact, she told me this woman had been in contact with her on Facebook, so not too hard to get onto just asking if she could call, but mentioned nothing about me. I think that what I'm trying to say in a really long-winded way is, please be nice to the people that serve you. Things like this have happened way too many times to me because of older people thinking they can bully me because I'm younger than them. And for all older people who think younger people are the problem, I've never had a problem with anyone that's come to this shop under the age of 30 slash 40. It really costs nothing at all to be a nice person, and you don't know what the other person on the other side of the counter is going through. Please just be thoughtful with your words. Posted by user AFK2204, titled, Hyper-Religious Lady Tries to Rip My Shirt Off Because I'm a Brainwashed Satanist. First post here, English is not my first language, etc. So this happened last summer, but me and my friends still talk about it because it was hilarious. The cast are me, your friendly neighborhood metalhead, F1 and 2 are my friends, and EP is entitled Middle-Aged Lady. The story goes as follows. I was walking in a park with my friends, and it was hot, so we were all wearing shorts and t-shirts. Now, being quite a metalhead, I was wearing one of my trusty band shirts, more specifically a Slipknot shirt. It has the band logo on the front, along with the image of what would seem like an angel with a cow skull for head, open arms, and a snake climbing on her. It's a beautiful shirt, one of my favorites. As I said, we were walking and talking, when we see a middle-aged woman coming towards us, and the conversation was something like, excuse me, you can't wear that here, there are children. We were confused and she said, I'm talking to you, fatty. Look, I'm not what you would call skinny, I've got to admit. What's the problem, lady? Your shirt. It has blasphemous and satanic imagery on it. You could impress the children here. Lady, it's not blasphemous nor satanic. I'm sure I'm free to wear whatever I like as long as it has no gory imagery or real blasphemy on it, so please leave us alone. No, it's an angel with the skull of the goat. That's clearly a Satan-worshipping message. It's blasphemy. You might as well be going around bestemiando. I live in Italy, and we have a form of cursing, bestemia, that involves God. That is really blasphemy, even though it's never used with that intent. And generally, people don't use it in public, since it can cost you a fine. It's just a drawing of a woman with a skull and wings. As I said, it's not blasphemous. I've had this shirt since Christmas and nobody has ever complained about it, even though I have many Christian friends. I even wear it at school and even my religion teacher says it's a cool shirt. Please just leave us alone. You're lying. That's a satanic shirt and you were clearly brainwashed to accept the satanic message that it has on. You need to take it off. I'm not going to take it off. As I asked you, leave us alone. Now, during this, my friends just stood there, pretty annoyed, but they didn't want to get involved with her. At least until now. The entitled parent said, You are taking that off now, and grabbed my shirt. At that point, even though I had been calm all the time, I snapped. I said, I'm not in perfect shape, but I'm 1.85 meters tall and I'm pretty muscular. I also have practiced boxing for a couple of years. When she started pulling the neck of my shirt, I hit her with a punch in the stomach. She fell and started screaming. 
you Satanist, I'm calling the police. At which my friend replied, lady, you attacked him first. I don't think it's in your best interest to call the police. No, he hit me, you'll see. Oh, please do. But before you call them, I think you should notice the security camera on that street lamp about five meters from where we are. I think the police will want to see that footage if you call them. She stood there for a second, then put away the phone and said, fine, but be sure that God will punish you, you will burn in hell. Now, I know it wasn't necessary, but at that point, I wanted to have some fun with this crazy woman, and I said, well, praise Satan then. She then started screaming at the top of her lungs about how she was going to find where I lived and how she would have sent an exorcist to release me from Satan's grasp, and went on insulting me and my friends. We just stood there laughing until this old man came over asking her to stop screaming because she was disturbing everyone. She tried to explain how we were some kind of Satanist monsters, but this dude looked in the eyes and said, Lady, I don't care if they're Satanist, Buddhist, or some other religious bullcrap, stop screaming or I'll call the police. She angrily walked away, not before reminding me that God is going to punish me. All right, and I think that's where we're going to leave today's episode, guys. I really do hope you enjoyed the content today. If you guys loved watching it as much as I loved making it, I would love for you to subscribe to the channel already if you haven't. Tell me what you thought of it down in the comments below. Maybe like the video, who knows? I'd also like to take this time to thank my awesome Patreon and channel members. Without you guys, uh, you know, I don't know what I'd do. I'd probably be homeless on the streets of Ireland, crying Irish dancing all over town. It would just be a mess. <laughs> But no, for real, you guys are up on the screen now. Thank each and every one of you guys. And if you personally want to join the club yourself, there are links down in the description below. There's also the join button next to the subscribe button. Small monthly fee, but hey, it goes a long way to help me create more awesome content. Well, with that said, guys, I hope you do have a lovely day, night, sleep, evening, day at work, day at school, whatever you're up to. I hope you keep awesome today. You're looking amazing. And I will see you in the next video. Bye.